everybody. How are you doing tonight? Sorry, I had to get a drink of my, my purple juice. Oh, my goodness gracious. How's everybody doing this evening? Sorry, I got thirsty right when I hit the start button. But uh, uh, I popped in a little bit early to say hi. Hi, hi. Hi, Ronnie Probert. Hey, Jeff. Hey, David Krause. David, thank you for your support. Appreciate you, man. Um, the... Uh, uh, it's been an uh, it's been an energetic uh, past couple of days. Oops, sorry, I'm turning showing all my junk in the background. Um, I have uh, been working on those uh, new announcement videos and everything for the new paid membership levels, uh, and um, uh, uh, just got those out last minute. So that's why my my class was starting kind of last minute. It's like, oh no, I got to hurry up. But uh, uh, it's pretty cool stuff. But um, yeah, I'm excited. David, how are you doing tonight? Dave Krause, how are you doing this evening? Uh, thanks for being a supporting member. Oh. Hey, Kevin Wilkson popped in. Brooks Martin, how you doing, bud? Roger and Troy. Hey, hey, hey what's happening? Good evening, all humans. <laughs> all the good, all you good humans. How's everybody doing? That's funny. Uh... The, um, we are going to tonight, I want to see if I can get you all to participate, uh, this evening, uh, in some Q and a, right. I want to make some active Q and a, uh, content. Uh, we're going to talk about some holiday project ideas. Uh, I'm going to start off with maybe some dishes, you know, not dishes like washing dishes. We all hate washing dishes, but you know, uh, chip and dip bowls and things like that. Um, I'm going to talk about that. And then, you know, other projects, of course, too. But I want to, you know, kind of interact with you tonight. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a lax night. We're going to learn some stuff. But also, I've been going nonstop for the last two days trying to get things out. R. Waleen. Hey, how are you doing, sir? Thank you for being a supporting member. Thank you. And uh, good to see you this evening. Brooks. Cool. What's happening, bud? But, um... I'm going to show you uh, guys and girls uh, just things to think about when it comes to making like chip and dip bowls and trays, but I'm going to do it two ways. One, as a model, like an Aspire, but then two, as you know, that we can do in Vetric VCarve Desktop Pro and everything. It's going to come out. They're both are going to be pretty much the same. Uh, one will be faster than the other. Dave Fushi, what's happening, bud? Thank you for much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, gold member Dave Fushi, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, for popping in on me. And I appreciate your support, man. Um, Roger Brown, you too, man. Thank you, Roger. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited that uh, some of my paid members are, you know, jumping in and everything. And uh, I just announced the release of uh, paid membership on the channel. It's really going to help out. And for you paid members, uh, if you're listening and all, uh, I'm going to be sending out uh, in the community chat, I'll be sending out the instructions and things on how to get to the exclusive Facebook group because uh, it's not searchable by the public and stuff like that. And then um, uh, so all of the perks that you get with your memberships, I'll be sending out the information to each of you after we get past tonight's class. OK, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Roger Martin says, uh, question, and, and I love it, Ro uh, Brooks, not Roger, I, I had Rogers above you, <laughs> but uh, Brooks Martin, uh, you did it exactly right, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, throw some question marks in front of your question uh, in the chat uh, when you're asking a question for tonight. That way I know, um, that way I know that, you know, it's a question and everything. So, uh, uh Doug, you doing all right tonight? I'm glad you are. Let's see, Brooks, let's see what you said here. Brooks, uh, just profiled, cut out a two and a quarter inch blank, and my four and a half inch quarter inch ball nose shattered like crazy. Any tips? Well, let me ask you this. Um, your, if I'm reading this right or understanding this correctly, Brooks, you have a four four and a half inch bit, ball nose bit, quarter inch. Um, you were doing a two and a half inch cut 
two and a quarter inch, uh, you were cutting out a two and a quarter inch blank with that four and a half inch bit. Uh, I'm going, man, uh, by using a ball nose, I'm not sure what the purpose is for that. I'm sure you have your reasons and everything, but I'm also sure that you built up a lot of heat on that bit. Uh, and uh, it probably snapped right at the collet and possibly a few other places too because that heat just uh, made it brittle. Um, give, me a, give me an idea, Brooks, why you're using a ball nose to do a cutout instead of an end mill. Uh, let me understand uh, what, I'm, what I'm understanding on this. Um, so you're going 20 inches a minute. Uh, that's one thing, too slow. Uh, and uh, 16th inch pass. So uh, you, you're going way too slow. Uh, for that cut. Um, you need to go faster. You need to, you're building up too much heat. The bit is, the bit is spinning so fast that it's not progressing through the material quick enough. Uh, and you would think you want to go slow, but you don't. You want to go faster. Uh, but it's not progressing fast enough. So all it's doing is it's just spinning, 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 and it's rubbing. It's rubbing, and it sounds like one of those turkey calls. That's why it screams and all real loud, but it's rubbing and rubbing, and it's not taking chips, so it's creating a kind of a fine dust and powder and everything, and heat, it's just building up heat, building up heat, building up heat, and everything. So um, the uh, you need to go faster. Uh, 20 inches a minute is too slow. Uh, per minute is too slow. Uh, you know, 16th of an inch depth of cut, doesn't matter, you could go an eighth inch depth, it's not a big deal. But you have to remember, you're working with a ball nose here, so it's only really kind of, you know, on the tip and everything, it's not a flat bottom, so it's only removing material in that kind of conical shape and everything each time. So, um, there you go, Troy, just like that. <laughs> That's funny, that's good, question marks, that'll work. Um, but uh, the... Um, uh, Okay, so it didn't break. I thought you said it shattered. Chattered. Chattered like crazy. Lord of mercy, I can't read. Sorry. I thought you said chattered. All right. So when you're getting when you're getting that noise, right? A lot of noise and everything and, and you know, chatter sometimes could be on the other end of the spectrum, but again, you're going too slow and your bit is spinning too fast. Slow down the RPMs and increase the feed rate. Okay, and again, the reason why it's so loud and making so much noise is because, again, it's like a turkey call. It's like that wood rubbing. That bit is just rubbing, 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 and it's not. It's spinning so fast. It's just rub, 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 because it's not advancing through the material fast enough to create chips, right? We want chip load. We want chips and everything. So um, go faster. Uh, you need, um, yeah, so uh, you need, for that, Honestly, I'd switch to an end mill, but um, uh, you know, you need to be starting at like 55, 60 inches a minute and faster depending on what your machine can do, right? It also has to do with the machine. Now, if you are breaking bits and you are getting a lot of chatter, that means you're moving too fast and your bit is spinning too slow. Turn up the RPMs and reduce the feed rate, right? The opposite side of the spectrum. But now when you're on the opposite side of the spectrum, which is where you don't want to be, uh, your you know, you're breaking bits, you're pushing your material around under your clamps, you're getting a lot of chatter and shaking and all that stuff, and, uh, you know, depending on the rigidity of your gantry and, and, and your machine and stuff. So uh, you're going too fast, bit spinning too slow. Loud noise, high pitch, uh, you know, just a, you know, a bad cut altogether, you're going, you know, too slow, go faster, and your bit spinning too fast, slow it down. So it's kind of that, uh, you know, give and take, give and take, give and take. All right, all right. So, Doug, everybody, man, Doug, uh, again, I think I said uh, uh, thank you for being a supporting member. But um, let's see here. Uh, started at 30 inches per minute, just a need to slow it down. No, you don't need to slow it down. You need to go faster. Faster, faster, faster. All right. Let's, uh, let's switch over to my other screen. And let's get me down in the bottom. All 
All right, on my computer, let me turn on my little cool little pointer mouse. I asked before, is green good for everybody for my little pointer mouse? Can you see that dot on the screen and everything? Can everybody see that pretty good uh, and everything? Because uh, I know I know sometimes it's hard. Hey, hey Stephen, how you doing, bud? Uh, St is it Stefan? Stefan Maine? Stefan? Uh, give me a thumbs up if, I, if Stefan is correct. Uh, how you doing? Welcome from Australia. Hey, Gene, what's happening, bud? Okay, let's... Uh, Close this, refresh that. All right, all right. Cool, cool. Yes, yes, everybody, green is good. Okay, green is good, green is good. All right, everybody, here's what we're gonna do. So tonight, I want a Q&A, right? I want an interactive Q&A, thank you. Uh, for the questions and Roger your question is next but uh, throw some question marks up in front of your question so I can see it identify it quickly in the chat um, and then uh, also uh, I'm going to be we're going to talk I want to talk holiday project discussion you know project ideas and everything and while we're doing that I'm going to we're going to I'm going to do some holiday projects and the first thing that we're going to start Stephen thank you so much for, for correcting me on that I appreciate you sorry I mispronounced your name um, the, uh, we're going to start off with chip and dip bowls or bowls, just holiday bowls, right? And, uh, I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you kind of like how to do it as a 3d model, or I'm going to show you how to do it as like, you know, for desktop pro and aspire users, how to do it as like with pocket cuts and bowl bits and all that stuff. So, uh, let me answer Roger's question. Uh, do you have a, do you know about cutting boards and making them food safe? Yeah, Roger. So, um, you are going to want to, your finish needs to be food safe finish, right? So, uh, you're going to want either a butcher block oil, uh, which kind of creates a built up finish, a hard finish and everything. Um, you want, you can use a mineral oil finish, uh, uh mineral oil and beeswax kind of mixture. Um, I have a mineral, I get my, my cutting boards get a mineral oil bath. Uh, so I have a tub with mineral oil in it, a sealed tub, and they get uh, dunked in there and they soak in there and they soak up. Uh, with that, you know, they have to be, you know, replenished. They have to be kind of, you know, uh, retreated. Chad Jones, Silver Member, thanks for popping in, Chad. I appreciate you. Um, the, but um, uh, the, oh, what am I trying to say? The, uh, the mineral oil bath uh, just has to be retreated. The butcher block finish or salad, there's also salad bowl finishes. These are all food safe finishes. You can go to Lowe's and what's the name of the, the brand guys and girls? Is it Watcom? Watcom, Waco, Waco. They uh, they have a booker, butcher block finish. It's really nice uh, and everything. And um, you know, uh, you wanna go there and all. So. Uh, that as far as cutting boards now, you know, whether it be an ingrain cutting board or a flat sawn, you know, type cutting board and stuff, um, your, what makes it food safe is those finishes and stuff. I don't think, uh, now of course, let me, I was just about to say something stupid. I was going to say, I don't think there's any issues with uh, different types of wood being, you know, uh, uh, Watco. Thank you, Brooks Martin. Um, I, I don't, I was about to say, I don't think there's any problem with woods, you know, certain woods being issue with the, with the, uh, cutting boards and stuff, but don't use pressure treated lumber, right? So, uh, because it's got a chemical in it, right? So we don't want any of that, uh, and everything. So, um, uh, we want to, you know, your, your walnuts, maples and cherries are fine. Uh, and, um, some of your exotics and all, you just got to be mindful of different, you know, types of uh, woods and everything, but uh, it's the finish, right? So salad bowl finish, butcher block finish, mineral oil bass, uh, a kind of a mineral oil and beeswax blend. Uh, all of these would work for a good finish. Now, someone might jump in because I'm not a finisher, right? I'm not a finisher. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can jump in 
and for sure correct me or tell me if I'm if I'm saying this part right. Now, if I'm not mistaken, if properly cured, keyword, some urethane type finishes after they cure and fume and all that stuff, are they safe? I don't use them. I only use what I just mentioned, you know, butcher block finish, saddle bowl finish, uh, you know, mineral oil bath, mineral oil beeswax. But I've heard people say, no, if you, uh, you can use some urethane type finishes and once they've fully, fully cured and they fumed out or whatever that's called, you know, that it, it you know, then they're safe. I don't know that for a fact, so I'm asking, that's kind of, it's more of a question to the group, right? Anybody know that? Uh, let me know. Chad Jones, I saw you pop in earlier. Thanks for popping in and thanks for being a supporting member. Man, it's, I'm so excited. All right. Now, look at the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get over there. And again, if you have questions, throw them up in the chat. I'm going to keep an eye on them. Um, you do not have to use question marks as big as Troy used, but uh, that sure helps my uh, blind self see. All right, we're going to start off with a bowl. Now, I am in Vetric Aspire tonight right now, but what I can do uh, is, or what I'm doing, uh, can be done in both VCarve Desktop, VCarve Pro, as well as Aspire. So when I say the word both, I mean all three. Um, okay, so there you go. Tongue oil. Uh, Brooks has heard tongue oil is food safe once it's fully cured. Um, urethane finishes are food safe when they've reached fuel cure about 30 days. Uh, but who wants urethane chips in their food? <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. So don't, don't use the urethane. I just wanted to, it was just a clarification I needed on that. But, um, uh, but there's lots of, you know, your salad bowl finishes. If you want a built up finish, you know, it'll built up, build up and everything. Uh, and, uh, if you want a close to the grain finish, your mineral oil baths or mineral oil and beeswax, uh, things like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I have on the screen here is I have a 12 inch by 12 inch by inch and three quarter block here. Doesn't need to be inch and three quarters. I just happened to create it that size, probably about inch and a half. Um, and uh, the first thing that I'm going to do uh, is I want to create a bowl, but I'm going to create the vectors for the bowl. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle right in the center. And I want this circle to be three inches in diameter. Um, and uh, let's go over here and fix that. Okay. And from here, I'm going to take my curve tool, draw a curve tool. And I'm going to draw one curve, uh, and that curve is going to come out the side. And I want to come out. Uh, I'm going to go up at an angle just a little bit. I'm going to click here, and I want to kind of come in here. Good job, good job, good job. All right, space bar to finish. All right. Now, on this curve... I could make it as organic or anything. Real quick, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta, I gotta say welcome to Roger S. Gold member, thank you for being a supporting member. Glad to have you here tonight for sure. The curve, this is gonna be like a flower petal type bowl. So make the curve as sweeping as you want, whatever the case may be. This is what I'm gonna do here, just a nice little sweep there. And then I'm going to, and I came out off the side here, notice that, and I've got my circle centered on the board. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to use my circular copy array tool, uh, and I'm going to go around the center of my material four times for a total of 360 degrees. Uh, so just this selected, this little nice curve, and I'm gonna copy that around four times. All right, now we're getting into one of those, uh, if anybody remembers those uh, machine monsters from the Matrix, right? Those that had little, little like octopuses, right? I just watched the Matrix last night, all trilogy and the, yeah, I was a glutton for punishment, but uh, so I got that on my brain. Um, and that's going to complete that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to use the, 
what do I want to use? I think I'm going to use the curve tool again. No, I'm going to use my art tool this time. And I'm going to write on the back side of each of those little curves that I've just copied around on the back side of them. I'm going to click somewhere on the back side here, and then I'm going to come up to the corner here, and I'm going to click, and I'm going to just make a nice little arc. You could go lots of different ways, but I just want to kind of come out about like this. Okay. And then I'm going to select that arc. And once again, I'm going to use my circular array tool. And I want to go around the center of my material, zero, zero, four times around. And I want to copy that. Oh my goodness, we have a flower, right? So there you go, right? So that's a nice start. By the way, if you want to know how to draw a cute little flower, there you go. <laughs> All right. So, uh, hey, Warren West, thanks for popping in. And Mark, you know, Mark Lindsay, thanks for popping in. I didn't say that earlier, but uh, appreciate you stopping by. I know you got uh, like your live event coming up and um, I appreciate you hanging out and stuff. So now that we have our, um, our flower, if you will, uh, this is going to be kind of the, the setting our bowls. Now, here's the thing. When we come out, or when we come uh, in, in here, uh, now we're going to do offset to create the walls. But here's the, here's the kicker. Um, depending on where the node, the starting point for each of these lines is, you know, if I go into node editing mode, I have a starting point down here. And that starting point is down at the very end, you know, for each one of them. Well, if I do an offset, it's going to kind of throw things off because certain lines, uh, you know, starting points and other line starting points, it throws them in different directions. And let me show you what I mean. So imagine, if you will, that I select this line and this line, these two lines here. Let me get out of node editing mode. This and this here and here. And um, when I do the offset, like an offset, and let's say I want to go inward, inward. Uh, and I want to go inward 3 eighths of an inch. That's how thick I want my wall. Um, 0 0.375. Now, it says it's going to create overlaps because it is, because they're individual lines and they're going to overlap. There's some trimming that's involved with this, but I want to continue anyway. Now I want you to notice, I want you to notice that one line went out, one line went in because of the way the start points uh, on the lines were created because, you know, my offset is offset inwards left. That means left of the start point. So if the start point is here, imagine you're standing here uh, where my green dot is looking at that start point, left, right, right of that start point. So that line that new line got created left here. And this one, the start point, it got created left, right? So it kind of pushed in and out instead of out and in kind of deal. So what we're going to do to combat that uh, in everything is we're going to hit Control Z to undo. And before we do the offsets, we're going to take just a quick second. And um, we're going to go into node editing mode. And we're going to make this the start point at the end. Uh, for each of our curves, not the little arc, but all the little curves that we did first. So make start point, make start point, and make start point. And what this is going to do is it's just going to have it go in the correct direction so that when we actually select everything, uh, it'll uh, it'll go the right way. Now I don't want to select the circle because I actually want to go outward on the circle, not inward. Um, but uh, so I'll do that one first. Let me do the circle first. So offset outward, and I want to go three eighths of an inch outward. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to select all of my uh, curves except for the two circles, and I you know I'm holding the wrong keyboard key down, and that's why things aren't working right. There we go. And now I'm going to offset 
inward by three eighths of an inch and click OK. And you're going to click OK because of the simple fact that you are creating an offset. The lines are crossing over. You can see that right here, right? So be mindful that that's, that's fine, okay? All right, so now that um, we are here at this point, now we need to kind of connect some lines, do some trimming uh, to, you know, create our bowl, uh, you know, and our walls and stuff of our bowl. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the extend tool, the extend tool, and I want to extend this line to here. I want to extend this line to here. Uh, all my short lines. So this line to here and this line to here. All right, so all we're doing is we're extending uh, the lines, you know, uh, so we can start doing some trimming and things. Good so far, everybody? All right, so let's take our scissors here and let's go ahead and trim uh, outside and then inside. And that's going to close off that vector there. We're going to come in here and trim this away. So it kind of comes down. We're going to uh, trim this, that, that, my apologies, uh, that ringer, uh, that was a spam caller anyway, so let's turn on the do not disturb for a moment. All right, um, so we're gonna trim away that, and what's that's, what that's gonna do is that's gonna connect, right, creating our walls, connecting our area there, and now rinse and repeat, work yourself all the way around, trim, trim, all the way around, come down, uh, trim this, keep the angle, keep that one, get rid of this one and this one. And then basically you're connecting it to the circle now, trim that away, right? Cool, cool, cool. All right, okay. I guess uh, do not disturb doesn't work for, uh, for uh, spam callers, they can get past it. Okay, so uh, trim, trim. And then once again, like just work your way around. It's the same, same, you know, trims on all of these. And just a very quick and simple way uh, to make a bowl, right? And then one more. out here. Now, at this point, at this point, we want to select everything and come over here to the join tool and just make sure everything is nice and closed. Right? Right, right? Cool beans. All right, what do y'all think so far of that bowl design? Not bad, huh? Hey, Jim, Nance, how you doing, bud? Thanks for popping in. But uh, not bad for, you know, it could be, it could really fit for any holidays, right? It, you know, it could be a, you know, Christmas flower. It could be a, you know, uh, a Thanksgiving, you know, bowl or something. It could be, you know, just whatever, you know, a nice uh, just everyday uh, table centerpiece, that kind of thing. All right, so let's look at this two ways. One, as a model, creating the shapes. And then two, just as a regular pocket carve and things. Um, so... First of all, the model. Uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select this outside area. I'm going to come into my shape tool. And with my shape tool, I'm going to create a flat shape that's going to be one and a half inches tall. We're going to um, call this base and apply that. All right, let's split that view so we can see what we got going on here, right? So there's the base. And then the next is gonna be kind of a curved profile. We're gonna start a new component.
Oops. Sorry. It uh, it wanted to. It wanted to uh, take and make the whole thing curve. All right, so now my center bowl uh, is going to be a bowl shape. Now I want it flat at the bottom. I don't want it going like to being a total bowl. It could be, but I want to uh, limit this so it's going to be a curved profile. I want to go. Uh, I, I do want it to be a dish, so 90 degrees. On that, uh, I want it to be a um, three quarter inches deep, and I want it to be limited to the height. Uh, and the height is, you know, going to be. Um, I'm gonna go 0.5. There we go. And this is gonna be a subtract, and we're gonna click apply. All right, now I don't want to be that deep on my center bowl, so let me take away the base height. Let's go to the base height. Uh, let's go just three quarters, 0 0.75 here, no base height. And click apply. Because what that was doing is it was shoving it three quarters of an inch down. Uh, and then uh, and then it was starting kind of that, uh, you know, uh, flat area out and everything. But there is, that's going to be my centerpiece. Don't worry about the edges. We'll clean and soften them up and all in just a moment. But um, then we're going to take and uh, always click on, uh, you know, after you click apply, click, click on start a new component before you go selecting any other vectors. Otherwise, it will uh, it'll just undo what you've done. All right, now we can select all of these. Okay, these are going to be curved profiles. I'm actually going to go 60, 60 uh, degree angle. No base height. I don't need to preserve the inner corners on this. Um, I want to go no limit on it. And again, it's going to be a subtract. Go ahead and click apply. Okay. So there's our bowl up to this point. It's great for candies and everything like that uh, and all kinds of stuff, right? So, uh, you know, like a little candy dish and all. All right. Now, um, let's start a new component. Okay. Looks good. All right, let's go over to the... Uh, make a copy of the visible model here. Turn off all the rest, so show only this. And let's take and soften that up. Now, if you want this to be a flower bowl, like, you know, with, where it's rounded at the bottom, on the bottom side, it would be a two-sided job. You would flip it over and you would create that curved profile in the back uh, and it would just kind of, you know, blend in with the front, kind of at your mid-plane. Um, I'm not going to do that. This is just going to be a nice bowl, you know, flat bottom. I can do some hand sanding if I want to do some shaping on the bottom and all. But uh, if you did want it to be kind of a flower petal where it's... Um, it's rounded at the bottoms on the bottom of the pedals and it's not a square platform then uh, you can absolutely absolutely do that as well all right and let me see if i add a draft to this if um if this gives me any better look all right, so that's bowl number one down. Uh, any questions up to that point? So all we did is we drew a circle for our middle dish, 
and then we drew a nice little curve, kind of a nice little curve that would represent like the one edge of a flower petal in this case. We copied that curve around four times on the center point, so it pivoted around exactly uh, matching all four points. And then we took an arc and kind of connected from the back side of one of those curves to the point uh, to close off and create that petal. Making sure that our lines offset the correct direction, we then are able to uh, do some trimming and snipping to create this bowl. We got some 3 8 inch walls, very quick and simple, but it really makes a nice looking bowl. And uh, again, I could do a two sided job and flip it over and uh, you know create that bottom design to it as well. Uh, in this case, I have a flat base and I could also do some hand carving and as well on my backside too. You know, I could kind of throw my touch into it, you know, uh, with some chisel work or so, you know, angle grinder or, or Dremel tool or whatever, right? Cool. Thanks, Patrick. Appreciate that. Uh, but um, so let this, uh, it's 50% done there. And um, we are uh, just about, I'm putting, what I'm doing is I want to see if I flare out the sides with a 22 and a half degree draft versus straight walls, if that gives me a unique look. Hey, Jim, thanks. Roger S. Hey, Jim, thanks. Roger S. Thank you. Glad you like it. But Jim, I, you know, thanks, you know, for, uh, I'm glad you're learning a little at a time. I, I, and you're welcome. You're welcome. And Roger S., I'm glad you like it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, but uh, it's, uh, uh, we're almost, we're at 70% here. And then, uh, and then we're going to move on. Now, you're going to get some buffering. I buffered. All right, I buffered on that one, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, I buffered because I had the resolution turned up way too high. Let me see um, uh, what I can do to make it a little bit faster, less resolution. Sorry about the buffering, everybody. That was on me. I did that one on accidentally. Um, we froze up, for those of you that don't know what buffering is, we froze up for a good few moments there, so I apologize about that. Uh, let me see if I can change up the resolution just a little bit and let me see if I can it's gonna be a little pixelated and I, I know it's gonna be a little pixelated but I'm just trying to do this for uh, time sake and everything let me see if I can add a draft to this without buffering this time. And I'm gonna go with a uh, 15 degree draft, so not something not so dramatic. All right, let's see if we can whip through this a little bit faster. Do you know what the show Murder Drones is? Why have I heard that before? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like is that a don't it's not a threat is it no I don't know what murder drones is um but uh I've heard of it but I've never seen it or anything tell me more fortress tv tell me more all right uh so uh this is the edges look a little rough because I had to turn the resolution down but what that did was it just flared out the sides a little bit to, so they weren't so vertical, right? Uh, just flared out the sides a bit so it wasn't so vertical. and um, But they look a little rough because I'm in a low resolution. When you're creating models like this, you want to try to be in... Um, you got you want to be in a, a larger resolution and everything like that. But uh, very simple design, right? Uh, you know, not bad for just a circle and... Uh, four arcs and four kind of like, you know, little curves. And that curve, that first curve, where it comes out and around, kind of like almost like that pedal, that out and around, you can make that whatever shape you want. Uh, and, um, and then how the other arc goes into it, 
that could be a curve too. You could have it kind of flow into it to make it more of a leaf-like, right? Uh, I mean, you could really play with it and have some fun, but it's really simple. It's, it's not that hard to do, and uh, you know that's our, that's our model. Now let's do the same design. Let's turn off the model. So look at this here. So that's the finished piece. Now with the second design, same design, uh, second way, second method where we don't have to build it as a model, uh, we're not gonna really get that flared sides, you know, and everything, but uh, that's okay. So let's, uh, let's come over here. So let's say that we just draw this as a vector and we have desktop, we have pro, we even have Aspire, but we don't wanna do it as a model. We just want, I wanna use my bowl bit laney and I wanna use my end mill and heck, I even want to use a little round over to soften up the edges, right? You know, the top edges and stuff. Hey, no problem. We can do that too. Kool-Aid, what's happening? And Podman, I'm glad you really like the design. Thanks. Um, so let's go over here to our tool pass and let's create our 2D tool pass to do the same thing. All right, so the first tool path that we're going to do is we're going to do our bowls. Now, I'm going to be using a bowl and tray bit and... Some people, um, most people would probably just use the bowl and tray bit, which is a radius end mill, flat bottom, radius corners, edges, and everything. Uh, they most likely would just do use the, the, the bowl and tray bit for the entire pocket cut that I'm about to do, these four pockets. You know, they just do let the bowl bit do all the work and everything. And I, I, I'm of a different mindset my bowl bits and, and, and other bits and all form tools and stuff, they're my specialty bits. And my end mills, quarter inch end mill, half inch end mill, things like that, those are my workhorses, right? So what I wanna do is I'm gonna create some offsets so I can use an end mill to clean up most of my waste material. And then my bowl bit is gonna do the edge work uh, and um, we're going to uh, uh, let the bowl, bitch do, bowl bit do the edges so it transitions into uh, that nice round. And uh, have you ever made any nesting dolls? Kool-Aid, no. But I, I don't have a very big throat on my CNC. Um, you know, like to be able to cut out the, the hollow ends, they would be very sm small nesting dolls, right? And all you're doing is you're, you're, it's one part that fits in another that fits another and then two parts that snap together like a box, like a, like a fitted lid box, you know, with a little lip, right? So you have your pod and it doesn't have to be the shape of a doll, but you know that round pod. And then one's going to be slightly bigger so it fits inside the other and that kind of thing. Um, if I had, you know, I can't do, I only have a five inch clearance on my CNC. I can only do so much there. Now, Opposite of that, if I was doing it on my rotary axis and I could make, you know, different size, you know, the main, the smaller, the smaller, the smaller that fit into each other, where it comes down to is I got to cut these parts out, I got to create the lips and I got to hollow them out, right? Because I can't do it on my CC because I don't have enough throat. Uh, you know, if I had my, I could transfer it over to my lathe, uh, you know, and clean, uh, you know, hollow it out uh, in the lathe and all that stuff, but... That's not the point of the question of, do you, have you ever done nesting dolls on a CNC, right? Uh, but um, no, I've never done it, never tried it, but I think it'd probably be pretty cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's first go look at my tool database and let's see what my bowl and tray bit is that I'm using here. Now I have two. I have the white side 1370, which has a uh, 7 16 inch diameter. And I have the 1376, uh, which has an inch and a quarter diameter. Uh, I'm going to use the uh, um, I'm going to use the bowl and tray bit that uh, has a seven sixteenths inch diameter. That that'll be the one I use because my bowl kind of comes down at a you know uh, it's going to be shallow, and then I want it to round over, and I don't need the round over too big. I say that now. Let me let me think. I say that. Give me a second. Do I want a small round over or a large? All right, I'm going to go with the 1376, the inch and a quarter bit. That's going to be my bowl and tray bit okay, that I'm using. So inch and a quarter is its full diameter. Half of that, uh, half of the inch and a quarter would be, what is that, five eighths? 
Um, let's see here. I got it. 1.25 divided by 2 equals. Wait, did I do that right? 1.25 divided by 2 equals. Yeah, 5 eighths. Um, that is the offset. That's the size of the offset. I want to offset by half the diameter of my bit. Uh, that's the offset that I want to uh, utilize. And uh, so 5 eighths. So let's select all of these, everything. And I'm going to offset inward 0.625. Okay. Now, these vectors that are selected, these offset vectors, these are going to be my pocket cut vectors with my end mill. Um, and uh, they're going to uh, cut down. I'm going to go point. What do I do? Three quarters on the last one. I'm going to go three quarters down. And I'm going to use uh, the quarter inch end mill for this. I want to do an offset. And this is just going to be my clearing uh, pocket clear 0 0.25 end mill. OK, what that's going to do for me is that's going to that's going to let my end mills get rid of most of the waste and everything. OK. And uh, hey, David Lois, didn't see you pop in there. I don't think I saw you pop in to say hi. How you doing, man? Um, and then my outside profiles, these here, uh, they're going to be a profile toolpath. I'm going to be cutting three quarters of an inch deep, same depth. I'm going to be cutting with my bowl and tray bit. I'm going to be cutting on the inside of the line, and uh, this will be my uh, inside edge cut. And what this will do for me uh, is um, that, let me slow it down just a little bit for a second. Uh, it's going to come in with that bowl bit, and the bowl bit is overlapping that pocket cut uh, the reason why I had that pocket cut, and I could I could go slightly less than half, but uh, half is good for me. But because that bowl is creating that round, right? If I bring my pocket with my end mill out too much, I could take away material that's supposed to be rounded. So all I'm doing is, you know, bringing that in to create that rounded bowl. Now let me speed this up so it uh, you know finishes in a timely manner. But um, so my end mills are my workhorses, right? They're going to get away uh, most of the waste. And then my bowl and tray bit is just going to do its inside profile cut uh, to kind of, you know, finish it up. And, and don't get me wrong, a, a bowl and tray bit can remove material just like an end mill, you know. Um, but my form tools, I treat them like, you know, my specialty tools and everything. And... Um, that uh, uh, I let my workhorses work and I let my special tools, uh, specialty tools kind of do their finish work, you know, the touch up and all that stuff. All right, so now I want to uh, do a nice edge cut here with a round over bit. I'm a big fan of the white side 2050 eighth inch round over on bowls and trays. That little eighth inch round over is perfect for just, just rounding over and softening up the edges of um, the, the bowls and everything. So I'm gonna select this outside profile along with, I should have uh, held the right shift key down and I wouldn't have to reselect this. Okay, don't not the inside vectors, that's just for the end mill pocket and everything. But um, here we're going to, and guys and girls, ask your questions. Uh, this is a Q&A, right? So throw those questions in the chat. That's what I'm here for. I'm just talking and you know about bowls and stuff until a question comes up. Hey, Darwin Bradley, thanks for popping in. Um, but I'm gonna go with a profile cut. It's gonna cut a quarter of an inch deep. Oops. 
it's going to be the white side 2050 round over bit. A little eighth inch round over. And it's going to be on the outside of the line. And it's always going to have a step over of negative 0 0.125. So that'll step it over just perfectly for it to round over, for it to do what it needs to do. So the passes uh, to create a nice round over for the, with the 2050, it's a quarter inch deep, eighth inch cut, or eighth inch offset, uh, negative offset in that offset allowance. All right, so we're going to go ahead and calculate that. And what that's going to do is that's going to uh, create the round over. Now, we're going to talk about these corners in here in just a minute. We'll fix those up so we don't have those ugly looking radiuses and stuff in there. But um, the round over is going to round over that edge. And then our profile cut, the final profile, would cut that out. And um, profile cut, we're going to... Um, go all the way through the material. I'm going to use an end mill. And calculate. Now, we would put tabs on this, of course. Uh, we definitely put tabs on this, of course. But let's look at, let's look at these anomalies here. And I'm going to turn up the resolution again because um, I'm not doing the modeling and stuff. Uh, let me go back in and close some things. I'm going to turn the resolution back up so just it's a little bit clearer in the uh, toolpath preview and stuff. Uh, we don't need to go that high. Let's go very high there. And let's go profile profile that's the round over and then the inside edge and the outside edge preview those visible tool paths let that run through really quickly and um yeah now kool-aid you got me thinking about nesting dolls man i think that would probably be a pretty cool project fortress uh come back to me with an answer on what the question is do you know what the show murder drones is you know because uh that kind of threw me for a loop uh and um There was a reason why you asked that question. <laughs> Let's see here. But um, looks like it could probably be. It's a horror web series, Australian based. Cool. Hmm. Interesting. All right, all right. Okay, let's get back to it. Um, now, you see these anomalies here. That's where the round over cut, and that's where that material wasn't removed by the pocket cut or by the, you know, the, the, the round over bit because of its size, right? It can't get into those tight crevices and things like that. And we gotta, we gotta know that. We've gotta, we gotta think ahead about that stuff, you know, those radiuses and stuff, depending on what size bit we're using and all. Now, my big old inch and a half bit uh, can't get into those tight places and everything. Um, and, uh, so the, uh, only thing I can do really is, I mean, there's a lot of things I could probably do. Um, I could probably run an end mill up to a certain depth to blend this down into that arc there where it creates like a little shelf. Um, or I could just make my radius is bigger, right? So these tight corners and all, um, I could come into my fillet tool and the radius of my inch and a half bit is 0.625. And I could come in here and um, on my, let me see, is it not gonna let me have a 0.625 radius? I might be too small, let me see, I might be too big. Yep. So let's see if I can, let me see here, 0.625, yeah, so let's go, let's go 0 0.5, 
There we go. I can do a half inch radius. So knowing that, knowing that, that I, I'd either have to kind of make my project just a little bit bigger uh, so I could get that 0.625 radius and everything in there. Um, I have a choice in that matter. Do I just make my project slightly bigger uh, than 12 by 12, maybe 14 by 14? Or do I go down and just have quarter inch radiuses on the bottom of the cut and, or not quarter inch, but uh, 7 16 inch radius and just use my, um, my other bowl and tray bit, right? So... I'm going to opt for the latter, uh, or no, the first one. Uh, I'm going to opt to go just slightly bigger. So let's go 14 by 14. I'm going to... Scale this up. Now I'm going to go to my fillet tool. Let's see if we can get that. Still not going to give it to me. That one will give it to me. That one will. That one won't. I'm going to find out why. Let me go in here and... It's like a, it's like a glitch in the matrix, man. It's probably that 11.554 patch that I need. Let me see here. So that all gave me what I needed there. Let me zoom in. Not doing it. Not doing it at all. All right. Interesting. Let me take a look at something here. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Let me figure out 0.625. Not there. 0 0.5. Huh. All right. Now that could very well be a glitch because I've sized up. I'm, I mean, I'm... I am, uh, huh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Maybe because of the curve and everything, it's not going to let me do it. Let's, fine, let's, let's play that way. Let's, um. Let me see if I can, I got to kind of pick my battle here. That makes it an ugly bowl. Let me see. One more time. One more time. I can do better. I can do better. I, 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 uh, I'm going to copy that around four times. So I'm going to use my circular array tool. I want to copy around the center of my material four times around. So it lands in the same place on each one. I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut that. I'm going to kind of commit to that pocket, even though it's kind of ugly looking, but that's all right. 
I can see some overlap issues there. I'm keeping the outside curve, getting rid of the inside overlap. Okay. Now, I'm just going to create the tool pass. Da, da, da. Let me see if my fillet will let me do it now. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> oh, what are you doing there? Don't do that. <laughs> you, it worked on that one. Not gonna get it's not gonna give me the time of day. All right, that's okay. Let me just undo. That's good. Let's just do the cut again. So let's recalculate the tool pass. We screwed up a little bit there. I screwed up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, but they, you know, um, it. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, I I should I, I should have went I should have used the ladder. I should have just went with the smaller bit, but I'm wanting that quarter inch rate at radius instead of the you know the the three sixteenths. All right, let me see what my questions are here. Um, Gene Kilmer, would a tapered ball nose work? No, that uh, uh, I'm not. Tr no, um, it uh, I'm trying to open up the area so the bit can get all the way around into those tight corners. And I don't want to, you know, just do a tapered ball nose because then I'm going to have a funky little radius at the bottom and everything. Um, all right. So let me select. Okay, that's why I wasn't getting that little round over because the, they're not joined. Hold on a second, ladies and gentlemen. Just because I trimmed, it did not join them automatically. There we go. They were open vectors. And um, they were open vectors. And... Now that the vector is closed, still not going to give it to me. All right, I was hoping it would give it to me, but um, I thought it was—I thought it was going to let me win. That one's working. That one's working. So this is my problem child, which means I'm going to go into node editing. Let me select this first. It is closed. I'm gonna go into node editing and that's kind of all of those nodes right there are kind of screwing me up. So I'm gonna go with the curve fit tool. Kind of eliminate those a little bit. And then It does not like that corner. There we go. Just had to find it. All right. Now I'm going to go in and select those vectors. Oh, I got one more. All right. Now I'm going to go in and select those vectors. Well, that took an act of God. Jeez Louise. So the corner was too tight. Uh, it wouldn't let me get that 5 8 inch radius on it. So I drew an arc to kind of make that uh, where it wasn't so tight. Trimmed it. had to join it to close it up. And then it let me, there was enough room to just round that off with that half inch radius. And it let me do it uh, um, oddly enough. All right. 
let's go ahead and go on our inside edge and calculate. And it's able to get in there much, much cleaner now, you know, uh, not tight. I don't know how it's going to make my flower look, but we'll see. And hey, you know, it is what it is. And Keith, you're never late, man. You just hear when you're here. <laughs> uh, we're just doing a Q&A, Keith, asking some questions, answering some questions. And, uh, and Gene, you know, on the tapered ball nose, see, this is a quarter inch radius here, right? And where it was down tight in that corner, uh, trying to get a ball nose just to clean up that little corner. Uh, I'd have an eighth inch, if I was using a quarter inch ball nose, I would have an eighth inch radius. And um, by the time it got done, it would just be a weird looking little anomaly uh, versus trying to, you know, create a nice smooth transition properly all the way around, right? So now when I do the round over bit uh, on these parts and everything, it should be able to fit much better in there and I should not have any of those little lips or islands, right? Um, and everything in those pockets, right? So it, it, it doesn't create those little ledges and, and everything. Um, now, even in here, okay, I need to be considerate of this area too because I'm using a quarter inch end mill to cut this out and the quarter inch end mill is not going to fit in here and that's gonna give me the ledge on the outside. So I'm gonna to go to my little V's right here and I'm going to um, go to my fillet tool and I'm gonna put in an eighth inch radius and I'm going to add that to these four points. Okay, I'm gonna recalculate my round over and then I'm gonna recalculate my profile cut on that. And if all turned out well, um, <clears throat> I should now have none of those little ledges, right? So, got to do what we got to do. All right, so David Lowell, uh, your question is, I'm looking to carve a 13-inch diameter by inch and a half diameter, inch and a half deep bowl on one side of a 14-inch square cutting board. Awesome, okay. Used a kneading bowl used as a kneading bowl, sorry. I was about to say, what's a kneading bowl bit? Uh, used as a kneading bowl. Uh, two, create the bowl as a 3D model. Best tool uh, path for rough with end mill finisher bonos, with bonos. Um, well, let's draw that one out, David. So let me just uh, come in here and look at this uh, really quickly and then we'll draw that one out. <clears throat> so, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is a pocket cut. Uh, if, you know, 2D cuts, no 3D model here. Uh, 2D cuts using a uh, end mill, quarter inch end mill, a inch and a half diameter bowl and tray bit, the white, white side uh, 1376. Um, a round over bit, nice little eighth inch round over, gives us those nice edges there on the top of our round overs and all. And then another quarter inch end mill to come back and do the profile cut. By creating the radiuses in those areas, we've gotten rid of all those ledges and everything. Cool, cool. All right, let's go ahead and let's draw out what, uh, I'm gonna just draw out based on what David uh, just described, just, just described, okay? Um, and uh, the, uh, we're going to, I'm gonna go with a 14 inch square cutting board, 14 by 14. Now, the, uh, the thing that throws me off on this, uh, let me move these vectors out of the way in case somebody has questions on those, is a 14 inch by 14 inch square cutting board, David. Um, 
that is going to be uh, two inches thick. Let's go fix that. And what throws me off is you're drawing a 13 inch diameter bowl on one side of the 14 inch square cutting board. So 13 inch diameter bowl gives me, um, I don't have a whole lot of room, right? So when you say one side, um, you know, are you talking about it's gonna, there's gonna be a bowl on the side of the 14 by 14 area, but the whole thing is gonna be, uh, you know, square. So this 14 plus this 13, uh, you know, let's go another 14. So the whole length of this is gonna be 28 inches. Am, am I, am I uh, understanding that correctly? So we're gonna have a 14 inch cutting board on with a 13 inch bowl next to it. All right, I'm gonna move this over one half an inch. It's gonna be a relative move, 0 0.5 inches to the right to create that center on there. So I have a 14 by 14 area here with a 13 inch diameter bowl here. Is that correct, David Lowell? Hey, Roger S. Uh, still came out great. Yeah, it did, man, it did, it did, it did. And uh, thanks, Ronnie, very nice. All right, so in my understanding, it's gonna be a 28 inch long part no, there will only be a half inch mate, half inch material around the bowl. That, well, this will be a half inch material around the bowl for sure, but uh, do we still have a 14 inch cutting board? So let me let me let me read the way I the, the question was worded and see if I'm reading it wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Looking to carve a 13 inch diameter bowl by one and a half inch deep on the side of a 14 inch square cutting board used as a kneading bowl. So is that it's going to have half inch material all the way around it, right? But um, let me here. Hell, let me just Google what a kneading bowl is. Give me just a second. David says yes. Um, all right, let me see this uh, kneading bowl. Let me see what a kneading bowl is, and then uh, that might. Well, and hold on a minute now. <laughs> that did not help me at all. A kneading bowl. K-N-E-A-D-I-N-G. -N -N all right. Let me, let me pull this over on the screen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's help out here. Let's all jump in on this one. Now, a kneading bowl, I mean, there's no... So are you making a kneading bowl out of a 14 inch by 14 inch square cutting board? Hold on a second. Okay. So there's only going to be 14, a half inch of material around the bowl. So that's, that's, let me go back to where we were originally, 14 by 14. Okay. With this 13, oops. Now, there's going to be a half inch of, uh, 
Okay. You'll have to forgive me, David. It's it's a hard one. That's a hard one to, uh, you know, um, uh, the wording is throwing me off here. Uh, Kool-Aid, I will get to your question in just a moment. So it's a two-sided. It's a two-sided project, right? So... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's only going to leave a half inch material. So on one side of the cutting board, it's going to be a flat cutting board, 14 by 14. But when you flip it over, there's a freaking inch and a half deep bowl on the other side. I I'm with you now. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. So uh, two inches thickness all together, 14 by 14. And... I don't know what my job setup is. Not working. All right, so this is gonna go to the other side. All right, copy to the other side. Or move to the other side, should I say. That's fine. All right, so we have a cutting board. Sorry for the confusion. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Uh, now, does anything get done on the cutting board side, David? Does anything get done on the cut? Is there a juice groove? Is there anything like that? Or is it just a flat cutting board, right? Because if not, then we got to come over to the other side here. Now, the kneading bowl, um, if it's going to be a smooth kind of transition, uh, like a dome almost uh, in the... On the back side of this, you know, to an inch and a half deep, if it's like a dome, then yes, that would be a 3D model cut. If it's got a flat bottom, uh, then it's not. But it wouldn't be a kneading bowl because a kneading bowl has to have that curve to it, right? So your kneading dough, it, it all, oh, okay, you're saying flat. So the top is flat, but the kneading bowl has a curve to it because you're kneading dough and it's got to be able to roll in that curve, right? It's got to have that nice transition correct so that would be a 3d model so if we come into here uh, it would be a curved profile and you just have to figure out you know what your uh, you know your dome or your dish depth is going to be but I'm gonna scale it to an exact height and I'm gonna go uh, one and a half inches um, and that's going to you know um, be a subtract. And then let's split the view here. Let's, uh, let me add a zero plane in here real quick. Now, the depth of this, I want to go, you know, from the top of the material uh, zero uh, here, you know, uh, the depth that I'm coming down, you know, I need to have, you know, and we want to be at an inch and a half. Um, the, let's go to here. And based on the angle that I chose, it could only really go three quarters. Let me see if I can force it on the inch and a half. And let me make sure that the job setup is correct. Okay. Now, the question uh, that you would have, David, is uh, is what's our angle? So this is a kneading bowl uh, from the pictures. I don't know what one is, but it looks like you're kneading dough, right? And it's got a, it just has a place where it's got a nice transition. So you're kneading that dough. And it's got to be able to, you know, kind of roll into this, into this bowl area. Am I saying that right? You know, uh, am I, am I, am I using a kneading bowl correctly? But, um, you know, we want to be at uh, an, an inch and a half deep here. And so I've just got a nice transition, you know, going into there at an inch and a half. That would be a 3D model cut. And um, the bit that I would use because there's no detail to it, you know, it's just a nice, you know, transition, a nice dome. 
uh, I would either go with a quarter inch ball nose, right? The larger the ball nose, the better because it gets us done quicker, right? Um, and hell, even in some cases, uh, you know, if, um, uh, if you could find the right place that wasn't a metal milling bit, you know, wood mill bit, you know, three flute or, you know, less, uh, but three flute, but a, uh, you know, half inch diameter would be awesome, but we'll go with a quarter. So it would be a 3D rough cut of a quarter inch end mill. Uh, we're gonna use the selected vector as the boundary and we're gonna calculate that cut, right? And, um, and sorry it took me, so, I'm so dense, sorry it took me so long to, uh, to get on that one, right? You know? Um, and it is, it is a t is, this is a gentle taper here. So um, the, uh, let's get the rough cut out of the way. And then you'll see that that's a 60 degree gentle taper down to that inch and a half and then back up in all four directions, right? So it's a gradual taper. It's not real, it's not like steep or anything, you know? So we went 60 degrees where that we have a nice little taper versus 90 degrees, which would be more down like this. We have kind of a nice taper and we brought that taper down to the inch and a half depth in the properties of that model and everything. So we'll let that, and again, I uh, again for speed's sake, I'd use a half inch end mill for the rough cut just to clear that out, right? To get that cleared out and everything. And you can see even these tapers and these steps here, the gradual slope that's going to occur, um, you know, to this depth. But thanks, John, for letting me know that too, for sure. And uh, Chad Jones, hey, man. Uh, uh, thank you. And uh, uh, <laughs> Suburger. Um, so, all right, I need to know how to pronounce your name because you're 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 a valued member, man. You're you're like you're a supporting member. So uh, S B R E G H E R. So G H E R. I want to say Ger, Rieger, Brieger, Sprieger, Sprieger. Did I did I did I enunciate that incorrectly? Let me know if I butchered it terribly. Um, but, uh, Sprieger, Stephanie, Stephanie, that's even better. <laughs> Thank you for being a supporting member, Stephanie. Appreciate that. All right. <laughs> but hey, let me know if I did pronounce that right. Or uh, is the S for Stephanie and then Brieger, the last name, right? All right. So there's our gradual rough cut, right? Now the finish cut Close, the first name is Stephanie, thanks. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, the, uh, that taper is uh, now gonna be finished cut, you know, that nice gradual, you know, cause we're kneading this bread or this, this dough, not bread, it's not bread yet until you bake it. But uh, I'm gonna use a quarter inch ball nose. Um, this will, uh, it'll be the biggest bit that I happen to have, but, um, because it's just a gradual cut uh, and everything, I don't I don't want to do it with an eighth inch tapered ball nose or a sixteen. I want to try to use the biggest bit that I can possibly do, right? I want this to be a raster cut. I want it to cut with the grain, so I get a nice transition, less sanding and everything. And uh, cool, man, awesome, awesome. I pronounced it right. Um, very cool. And thank you for being a supporting member. Uh, Roger S two sided Roger. Thanks for jumping in and helping me with figuring. I went dense on David's instructions. I couldn't figure it out. Uh, I thought I wasn't thinking two sided. So I appreciate all of you for helping out with that one. Uh, let's see here. Preview that. Now you see that let's stop right there. Stop. Boom. You see that lip right there. That is my fault. That lip is not supposed to be there. But when I built this model, the first thing I should have done is I should have went over here to the, um, the uh, job setup and I should have made sure that um, there's no uh, drop down. And what it is, is this is a two sided job. Okay. And this is where, this is where a lot of people get confused. I need you to really understand this, this point right here. My model position in my material right here 
okay? This is a two-sided job. So we're looking at this block that my little green dot is over right here. We're looking at this block as side one, side two, okay? Side two, side one. It doesn't flip like our board does. So right now it's showing that my model is at the top of side one and that means if I were to flip this over, it means I'm cutting down this half inch deep before the model starts getting shaped. And that's wrong. This needs to be at the, my model needs to be at the bottom because it's, it's transition, it's a smooth transition. It's a smooth transition uh, from the, you know, on the bottom, you know, it's, it's the bottom side of this cutting board. So this has to be at the bottom. My model has to be at the bottom. This extra meat, that's my cutting board right on the top side. So many people will get confused. Let me get this, um, let me get this uh, typed in here. Uh, many people get this confused because they're, they might think that that, that block in the material setup flips with the job, whatever side you're on and all that stuff. And that's not the case. Um, so uh, with that, we, you know, uh, we need to recalculate the two tool paths. And it was an immediate giveaway when the, um, when this cut started happening, that lip that occurred, that should have been a smooth transition. It should just smoothly transition into that dish. So you can see that transition here now. So when we preview the visible tool pass, after we hit reset, of course, stop, reset, preview the visible tool pass, We want to uh, we want to come in. All right, so now let me go back up, and I think Kool Aid retyped his question. Thanks for doing that, Kool Aid. But let me see here. Uh, idea for future videos: Can you go through new features as Vetric updates their software? I know they do some pretty short and not many examples. Uh, sure, uh, Kool Aid. So like you're talking about when 11.55, you know, two comes out or five, five, four, you know, what the, what these changes are like, uh, like an explanation video. Yes, I probably could do that. Um, now, you know, of course, Vetric does a, they do a pretty good job of saying, Hey, here's what's new in 10.5 and 11, 11.5, but it probably, it probably wouldn't hurt to go through and, um, and uh, you know, probably try to explain it a little bit in more detail, right? Of what it's what it can do for you and things like that. So yeah, it's a good idea. Thank you for that. Um, the uh, so now Kool Aid comes back with a second question. All right, question about bits. The more flutes, are they better or worse? The more material they are used for. Okay, so. When you're cutting in hardwoods, softwoods, plywood, melamines, and things like that, you know, plastics and acrylics, uh, no more than three flutes. So um, the more flutes, uh, when you start getting into four flute bits and five flute bits and things like that, now you're getting into metal milling bits, mill bits for milling non-ferrous metals, aluminum, copper, brass, and things like that. Um, the uh, you when you're working with woods and things like that, you want less flutes uh, and uh, you know uh, three or less. Uh, so you have you know your O flutes, your two and three flutes and things like that. Um, but uh, I'm you know I kind of stick in the range of two and three flute bits. You know all of our tapered not all of our but most tapered ball noses are three flute bits. Uh, end mills are generally two flutes uh, and things like that. But when you get into, you know, three flutes, or I mean, more than three flutes, you know, four, five, and, and, and so on, now you're getting into specialty metal mills. And some people try to use those metal milling bits 
on their wood CNC router, you know, because they happened to have it. Their grandfather had them, had this whole collection of bits and things. And, uh, you know, he was a machinist and a metal car, you know, cutter and all that stuff. And uh, uh, he had all these wonderful, amazing bits, and they're trying to carve wood with it and stuff. And, um, yeah, not so much. All right, so uh, look at this, you know, a beautiful, nice little transition going into there. So, uh, David, to answer your question, we would be going with a uh, what we did here on the setup, the shape tool. Uh, on the circle, that 13-inch diameter circle, we went with a dome profile, a curved profile, 60 degrees. We scaled it to an exact height. Uh, in this case, I it should have been 1.5 and I typed in 7.5 for some odd reason. Uh, but after it was all said and done, uh, went back into the properties of that component and changed it to the 1.5. So we, we got it there uh, for that depth. And then uh, we used a quarter inch end mill for the rough cut and a quarter inch ball nose for the finish cut. All right, so Hopefully that'll point you in the right direction and everything. Right, right. Cool beans. All right. Now, let's... Uh, uh, and Stephanie, you're welcome for the shout out. All of you, uh, all you um, uh, paid members, you know, uh, deserve a cool shout out. Doug, uh, can I... Can you do it in pro? Sure. Same thing. Exact same thing, right? Let me just do it. So because a lot of people think just because I'm working in Aspire um, that, uh, you know, that. But this is a dome and a dish, right? And those are domes and dishes are free models in clip art that come with your Vetra VCAR Pro, right? So um, if I come down into VCAR Pro. What? Doo -doo -doo -doo. All right, we're gonna go create a new file. Two-sided job. 14, 14, two inches. Uh, I'm gonna flip along my Y-axis. That's just because it's me. Uh, click OK. Gonna go into the clip art and under clip art, I'm gonna go to domes and dishes. Gonna grab a 45, 60 degree dome here and drop it in there. Gonna go to my size tool and change this to 13 by 13. Gonna center it on the material. And in the modeling tab, we're gonna come into the properties, that spanner wrench. And we're gonna change the uh, combine mode to a dish. We're gonna change the height to 1.5. We're gonna create a profile around that dish that'll create that circle for us and then we're going to create a zero plane in there so we can get that preview uh, plane when we're looking at this right we're going to go over to the material setup and we're going to make sure that the model is at the bottom of the material right because it's side two and all that stuff and on this case i made it on side one Right, uh, but um, so since I made it on side one, I didn't flip it over. Uh, the bottom side is going to be your cutting board in this situation. So I made it on side one, so the model needs to be at the top. But if this would, if I would have created it on side two, then the model would need to be at the bottom. Okay, okay, as long as we understand that. So let's go back here, and I did it on side one, so I'll put it at the top. And then we're going to select our vector, vector, 3D rough cut, quarter inch end mill using the selected vector as the boundary. Calculate that toolpath. Followed by 
a 3D finish cut using a quarter inch ball nose. Bear with me, for some reason my quarter inch ball nose was not active. Let me see here. There we go. Calculate. Oh, no boundary offset. Uh, let me stop that for a minute. I do not want a boundary offset. It doesn't need it. So zero boundary offset. Calculate. And that'll be how we do it in Pro, right? So we're using the, uh, the pre-made models of the domes and dishes uh, to drag and drop it in, right? So uh, not everything that we can do in Aspire can be done in Pro, you know, because with Aspire we can build our own custom models and things like, like that, but something like this where it's a dome or a dish, we have those models in Vetric VCard Desktop and Pro that we can use to do the same thing. Yeah, for sure. And we could change our height, uh, you know, uh, and, and all that stuff, our depth and everything uh, within there. Uh, we just, you know, we couldn't use the Create Shape tool that's in Aspire because that's that. We just had to drag in a shape that was already made and then adjust it. Adjust its size and adjust its depth. All right, cool. Hey, Brandon, what's happening? Molding toolpath also. What would you like to know about the molding toolpath, Brandon? Let me know and... Uh, I'll, uh, I'll show you. All right, let's, uh, so now we've got some bowls and dishes and things and stuff like that out of the way. We got some, you know, discussions. Um, and Kool-Aid, let me know if I answered your question uh, for sure. And uh, uh, Doug, let me know for sure. Let me know, Doug, if uh, I answered your question. Uh, and uh, Doug Pushy, let me know. And uh, again, um, uh, the side one, I created that dome on side one so the model had to be at the top. If I would have done it on side two like I did in the, you know, Aspire, then I would just have to slide that slide bar to the bottom. As long as you understand that, because that model in material, that little block doesn't flip just because you're on side one or side two. You know, it stays there. So this is top, this is side two, side one and side two. Cool, man. Cool, 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 cool. Um, you can do a dish. Yeah, okay, yeah, Brandon. Uh, um, uh, Brandon is saying with the molding toolpath, you can create a dish as well, too. And I'm assuming, uh, Brandon, we are going to be creating, uh, you know, um, the like half circle profile and having it follow that path around in the molding toolpath, right? So, uh, very, very cool. Very cool. All right. Let's go back here. Now, I want to know, uh, there's like 20 days, you know, to Halloween. How many people uh, in the group are kind of going all out uh, with Halloween carvings and stuff? Um, you know, uh, let me know. At Digital Woodcarver, our customers, for our customers, we're having a pumpkin, <laughs> a pumpkin carving contest, uh, but they're not actually carving Pump, real pumpkins. They're doing wood carvings. It could be a 2D carving, a V carve of a pumpkin. It could be a 3D model carve of a pumpkin. But it ha there has to be a pumpkin in the project, right? And uh, for a chance, they're going to win some cash and prizes and store credits or whatever, uh, or some training time with me and things like that. But uh, we have a little uh, uh, October pumpkin carving contest uh, that's going to be starting for our customers which is pretty fun. It kind of it gets them involved and interacts and everything. So, um, um, jack-o'-lanterns. How many are making the little uh, pumpkin face little jack-o'-lanterns, you know, and stuff with their CNCs and things? Those are popular and stuff and around here and all. Um, let's see here. And, and ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you have any questions, throw them in the chat. Uh Throw them on the chat. And John, John, John Thompson. Let me just go back to John Thompson here for a minute. Uh, John Thompson had a very valid point, ladies and gentlemen. Um, 
John says, hey, isn't this really a one-sided job because he's only carving the bowl on one side, you know, in the cutting board? Yes. Yes, John. Um, where it becomes a two-sided job, John, is if on that cutting board he wanted to carve and engrave, you know, a custom decal or logo or do an inlay or add a juice groove or any of that stuff to the cutting board side, then that would make it a two-sided project where you're doing all that decorative stuff or whatever on the cutting board and then you're flipping it over and doing the bowl. But you're absolutely 100% correct that it is a one-sided job, ladies and gentlemen. He is correct on that because all we're doing is we're taking this two-inch cutting block, this butcher block, we're setting it on the table and we're carving this beautiful kneading bowl dish on one side. There's no flipping, there's no nothing, there's no doing that. So it is a one-sided project. So uh, John, uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, you know calling that out in the uh, um, in the um, in the chat. Thank you. All right, cool. So let's see what we got here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, come on, all you good humans, show Lenny some love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, appreciate you, Troy. Troy's always been a good cheerleader for that uh, and everything. Um, uh, Stephanie says, can you show how to create a three inch dice with rounded corners? Sure. Let me see here. All right. Do, 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 do. Oh, standby. Hold on. It's still simulating a toolpath. Give me just a second. All right, let's go. Bum, 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 bum. Let's go over here and let's go to our job setup. Now, I'm going to assume, Stephanie, that we are uh, going to possibly have a three inch by three inch block kind of made on the table we're rounding off all the edges uh, or are we taking just a chunk of wood and cutting this uh, three inch die out of it right so um, either way let's go with our let's go with a four inch by four inch or even a three and a half by three and a half like a four by four right we could do that too um, I don't know why my uh, mouse is not cooperating. And I'm gonna do that, Stephanie. I'm gonna go three and a half by three and a half by three and a half. Uh, like I've cut a block out of it, like I cut a chunk of three and a half inch uh, uh, off of a, you know, like a four by four post. And I wanna make a die, set a yard die out of it for Yahtzee yard game or something. So I'm going to go three and a half by three and a half by three and a half. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Um, yeah, call party dice. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Cole. Um, yes, Troy, I was one of the first people to give Lena a thumbs up. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, um, what is the thickness of the material you can do on a 2440? Let me answer that question first, because that's what I have a 2440. So if I was making this yard die, I have a five inch clearance, right? So technically I could carve uh, up to uh, four inches uh, material if I was just carving. I could carve with four inches of material if I wasn't carving too deep. But cutting through, I gotta have the same amount of bit as my material when I'm cutting through, right? So um, I can two and three eighths. I can cut through up to two and three eighths inch material, uh, and still I, I need a small waste board, and I don't cut into my waste board, so I, you know, I could use a quarter inch or you know a thin waste board and everything for that. But I could technically cut through up to two and three eighths inch thick. Now, on this die. This three and a half inch by three and a half inch block. Let's say I have a uh, you know uh, a four by four cedar four by four. I'm going to cut you know these 
three and a half inch cues out of it, right? So I can bring them over to the CNC. Now, Stephanie, I'm going to tell you the way that I would approach it, okay? And then you let me know if uh, that would make sense to you. David Lowell, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, David, uh, for becoming a valued member. Ow, Stephanie, like I said, I'm going to show you how I would approach this, and then you can let me know uh, your thoughts on it. Now, the, um, the thing that I would do uh, for me is, um, let me just tell you how I would approach this. I would uh, come in and I have a table saw. Uh, so, and I have a chop saw as well too. Um, I have a band saw, right? I have, I, have, I have three different saws that would do this for me. Bobby H, thank you, gold member Bobby. I appreciate you for stopping by. Um, but here's what I would do. I, I, would, I, would make, I would cut my blanks to three by three because this is what I want my die to be. And all I'm doing, if you think about it, all we're doing is we're going to be rounding off all the edges, okay? Rounding off every single edge so we have nice rounded, you know, uh, uh, die. Uh, rounded corners, a nice die with rounded corners and everything, but it's also going to be a die, right? I got to be able to, I got to, I got to do my holes and everything. My one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So, um, so that I could do that, uh, and I could do lots of them at a time, I would take a piece of 24 inch by 24 inch, uh, MDF, three quarter inches thick, and I would cut three inch pockets in rows and columns, you know, for however many I could fit, I'd, I'd space them apart about a half inch apart, you know, half inch, three quarter inches apart. And um, I would carve these pockets and the pockets would, you know, they would be about three eighths of an inch deep. And what this will do for me is it will allow me to take my three inch by three inch blanks that I cut and I can drop them into this jig. This is jig is just gonna be for the purpose of holding my die for me and everything. Now, the thing I gotta remember is, is uh, you know, it's gonna be a friction fit uh, and everything. I can't have any clamps or anything like that. I could I could throw a two-sided tape or whatever, but I, I need to be able to flip these. I wanna be quick about it. I wanna, I wanna do this production-like environment. So my, my four inch or three inch by three inch squares at three eighths of an inch, if I do a round over on there, I'm kind of losing some of my edge for the friction fit, you know? So I need to know, I need to kind of pretty much be thinking ahead of how how big is my radius gonna be? You know, and stuff like that. Let's, let's go with, uh, for now, let's go with a quarter inch radius on this. So uh, my job setup uh, would, here, here's what my job setup would be. It would be 24, by 24 I don't know why my battery's dying on my bells um, and um, the thickness is at this point because I'm only carving on the top side the thickness is really irrelevant so I'm just gonna go with the thickness of my jig now trust me on this this will make sense because I'm touching off on the top of the blocks for each one. If I was touching off on my waste board, then it would really matter how tall my three inch spot block is sitting down in my jig, right? So I'm just going to go 0.75. Now this is going to be a single sided job. We're going to click OK. And here I'm going to draw in my three inch by three inch squares. On these three inch by three inch squares, they're gonna have fillets, dog bone fillets. And let me drag this guy down here. So we're gonna have a dog bone fillet. So my corners of my three inch by three inch by three inch blocks have a place to go. And I'm gonna put a uh, 0.125 radius. And we go one, two, three and four. Now, I am going to create an array copy of these. Uh, we're gonna select this and I'm gonna go with four 
by four. Let's go four rows, four columns. And let's go So, um, one, two, three, four. let's go, I'm going to go three quarter inches apart. Give me some room in case my, my router, my round over bits wide or anything like that. I'll go three quarter inches apart. 0.75, 0 0.75. And, uh, let's go six by six. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to center that on the board. Now, I'm gonna create a pocket cut uh, for this. This is my jig, Stephanie. I'm making the jig first, then I can make the parts. So uh, I'm gonna cut 3 eighths of an inch deep. I'm gonna use an eighth or quarter inch end mill to knock that out for me real quick. And um, do, 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 do. get down to my end mills. And Big pocket. All right, let's cut that out. Now, <clears throat> preview that toolpath. Okay. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to really ensure that it was a friction fit, um, you with me so far? Awesome, awesome. Uh, if I wanted to make it a really a friction fit, I would probably undercut this. I'd use an offset allowance in the profile toolpath to undercut it by a few thousandths of an inch. So it really had, I mean, I really had to, you know, get them in there so it was a tight fit. But this should, if I do my cuts right on my band saw, on my chop saw, on my table saw or whatever, uh, my three inch by three inch by three inch blanks, I should be able to accomplish that. You know, if I can't, then I'm just gonna do one at a time and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna have some weird clamps that hold it. <laughs> <laughs> but I should be able to, they should be a nice friction fit. Now, when I do my coasters, I do my coasters the same way and everything. Now, here's the thing. While that is, um, while that is doing its thing on the jig, I'm going to open up a brand new window here and we're going to make our sides, right? You know, and everything. So I'm going to open a window here and I'm going to create a new file. And this one is going to be a uh, three by three. And uh, again, on this in this situation, thickness doesn't matter, but just for visual sake, we'll make it three by three by three, and it's a single-sided job. Click OK. All right, I'm gonna create six layers. One, two, three, four, five, six for my six sides of my die. On my first, uh, we're going to have the uh, center here. Uh, that's going to be one right so we got to figure out we got to we got to figure out how big we want our circles to be because six of these bad boys have to fit on here at some point in time right uh we got to have one two three four five and then one two three one two three for six and all that stuff so don't make your circles too big um but uh also don't make them too small either now what i'm going to do is i'm going to create um I'm going to create uh, two, 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 one, two, hold down the control key, not the shift key. One, two, bear with me. Let me grab the right one. Holding down that control key, I'm just dragging out six um, of these. One, two, three, four, five, one more, six. And Let's uh, take and draw a line. I want to make all this nice and even and centered and all that because I'm gonna all I'm gonna use these lines to align me up, right? And uh, I could use guidelines, but I'm gonna use just regular lines. Um, so the if this is three by three, and imagine that you know one of my circles is gonna be here. Let's just pretend that it's here, right? So from the edge of this die to here, uh, if I were to measure that vertically, uh, from there to there, we're about 0.433. So I'm gonna just go uh, 716, 0.4375. Okay, picking a number. 
I have a pattern for die, but I'm, I'm drawing this from scratch. So I'm picking a number. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to take my X axis and I'm going to subtract 4.375 and 4.375 is, what is that? 0.4375 times 2 equals 0.875. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take my X axis and I'm going to subtract 0.875 from that. And I'm going to hit equals. And I'm going to take my Y axis and subtract 0.875 from that and hit equals. This needs to be a period, not a comma. Oops. And what that does is I can get rid of this line too. Um, that's going to, and let's uh, take my X divided by two equals, Y divided by two equals. Okay. And what that's doing is, or what that's gonna do is that's gonna give me a place for all of my circles, right? So I can have one there I can snap one in the center. Now I don't need to place all uh, six manually. I could just mirror these over, but since they're already on the board, bear with me while I lay these out, right? Now I could have my six. I don't need to have my six that far apart. They could be closer. They could be whatever. Lay out your die. You know, there's all kinds of vectors online for dice vectors. Just uh, humor me. I am going with, you know, something along this line. And looking at it, I should actually be in. Um, I should actually be in much more, probably. If I went there and there yeah so let's let's go in that'll be better for me so mirror that there all right so there's my six and looking at that i'm looking i'm thinking around over here all the way around and all that good stuff um around over will be fine there my numbers are good so that's good i'm going to stick with that for the six um and i'm going to redraw my rectangle to match because that rectangle is also going to be the for my five and my three and my two and all that stuff okay all right hang in with me we're getting somewhere i swear we're getting somewhere ladies and gentlemen hang in with me we're drawing some dye here all right so this will be uh my six layout for my six so i'm going to take this and i'm going to uh hold down the shift key I'm going to move the selected vectors to layer six, and I'm going to um, also copy them to layer five. And I'm going to turn off six. I've got five here. And on my five, I'm going to take and I'm going to pull this to the center there. And I'm going to just eliminate that. I'm gonna use this rectangle. I'm gonna stick with this uh, rectangle is there. So that's gonna be my five. And then I'm gonna take uh, these and um, I'm gonna copy them. I should just go through and copy to each of the layers, four, three, two, one, but I'll just do kind of one at a time. Turn it off the five uh, and making my four layer here, I'm just going to get rid of the circle there and then i'm going to copy that and i'm just kind of doing it a little bit the long way as far as copying i could i should just do it all quickly across but uh, i just want you to see what we're doing here copying that to layer three i can turn off four and on layer three i can take this and drag it to the center and get rid of this one select that copy that to layer two on layer two does anybody remember how is two drawn <laughs> on dice hold on a second dice number 
too. Let me see how dry. Let me see how uh, dice number two. Uh, they're di okay. It's diagonal. All right, cool. So on turn off layer three and on layer two, uh, just get rid of this circle. And then I'm going to take that, copy that to layer one. And on layer one, I'll take and get rid of the rectangle at this point because, well, no, let me keep the rectangle just for a minute. It's the center and the, the center is the center, center of the job, so I don't need the rectangle. And there's my one, right? So now I have one, two, three, uh, three is off. I got to fix three, uh, four, five, and six. So let me come back to really quickly. Let me turn off everything. Layer three. That is centered. Okay, so it's my layer one that's off. Layer one. Why is my one and three off? All right, let's use the software. Align to the center of the material. That one. Align to the center of the material. There we go. One of them was off. All right. Okay. So now we have our die pattern and everything. And let me just make sure this one's aligned to the center as well. There we go. Okay. So now we have our die pattern. Uh, all we need now is a vector going around our three inch by three inch border right here. Okay. Hang with me now. Hang with me. Hang with me. Here we come. Daniel Bradner just joining. Thanks for having me here and all that good stuff. Bob H. Say hi. How are you doing, man? Are you doing all right tonight? Mini ghost. All right. So rectangle around the border because that's going to be my round over vector. So I've got these die sitting in this jig. Visualize this with me, Stephanie, and everybody else. I've got these die. I've taken some 4x4s, four went to Lowe's, bought some cedar 4x4s. Four I've chopped them up into 3 inch by 3 inch blocks, you know, on my chop saw, band saw, table saw, whatever I had. I just cut them down and had these, I got all these blocks now. Rough sawn blocks uh, that uh, haven't been, you know, sanded plain, none of that stuff. I'm going to do some nice finished sanding and all when everything's cut. I'm going to take these blocks over to my jig and in my jig here, let me turn off the color. I've got these pocket cuts and everything, and I'm going to start stacking and getting them in there and everything. Right. And now I'm going to zero out on the center of this job or the bottom left corner. I don't care where you are because your jig is your jig. Right. But I'm going to be touching off on the top of the blocks for my Z zero position. So I'm going to be zeroing out. Um, Cool, man. Spokane, Washington. I used to live in uh, Maryland, uh, which, wait, hold on. <laughs> Am I about to sound stupid? You're in Washington. Maryland's over near D.C. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, bud. But uh, hope things are going well over there. Um, but I'm going to fill up this jig, and I'm going to cut all my ones first, and then I'm going to cut all my twos, and then all my threes, and all my fours, and all my fives, and all my sixes, right? So as, I, as that machine cuts, right, when it finishes one of the die and moves to the next one, I'm going to be flipping that die, right? Or I'll just wait till it's done, flip them all to the next side, making sure that you turn them the correct way. So one is the proper side of two and that kind of stuff and everything. But you flip it all and then you run two. So here's our tool pass. Let's go back over to the design here because this is the actual design that we would run. Let's get rid of this. But this is the actual design we would be running and everything. So the first one is going to be a, for me, uh, this, I want it to be a nice, uh, a nice round bowl, right? So the question would be is, uh, you know, what's, let's see what size these holes are. These holes are half inch. Great. I can use a half inch radius box core bit and I can do a nice little, a nice little cut, uh, where, you know, a nice little drilling tool path. 
you know, to create that little rivet and everything. Um, the, uh, so I believe, let me look at my tool database here. I believe I have a half inch diameter box core bit. Let me see. I do. I have a half inch diameter box core bit, so I can use that. So we're going to go in here, and uh, this is going to be a drilling tool path. We're going to cut down. Now, how deep do we want our cuts to be? I'm going to just, for right now, I'm going to say, I don't want to go down half the diameter bit. I'm going to go 3 16 right? 0.1875. 3 16 1.1875. Now, Stephanie, I'm just making up these numbers for right now because, you know, we would finesse it, you know, and figure out exactly what the number should be and all that stuff. But I'm going to use uh, pecking. Don't really need to, but I do want to uh, in everything. And this is going to be my number one, right? So uh, I'm going to calculate that tool path and then uh, preview that visible tool path. And my box core bit is going to cut that. Now, here's the deal. That did not give me a nice little divot like I want. And the reason why it gave, didn't give me a nice little divot is because I didn't use my box core bit. <laughs> I got to select the right bit, Stephanie. So here we go. We got to go to the half inch box core bit, hit select, calculate that tool path, reset that preview, preview that visible tool path. And uh, there we go. So that's going to be that. Now, if I don't want to go that deep, you know, I could go an eighth of an inch deep, whatever the case may be, right? So, but that's, that's right now, that's going to be my number one. It'll get painted black um, and uh, that'll be my one, right? And then I've got to do a round over here. So my next tool path is going to be a profile cut. And before I do my depths and everything, I want to choose the bit. I want to choose the bit. And so on the bit, um, I want to come down and let me look at my round over bits. I have a three eighths inch radius round over. I have a quarter inch round over uh, and I have the eighth inch round over. So let's go with a uh, three eighths inch radius round over. And that is going to have a half inch depth. Wish I could measure that right now, but um, let me see here. Pass depth is going to be 0.375. That's my radius. Let me draw this out real quick, Stephanie, just so I can have some depth measurements for my cuts because I'm going to be doing this in one pass. I'm going to come in here to my rectangle tool and I'm going to go with 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And I'm going to have an internal radius of 0 0.375. And I'm going to click that right there. And um, the, uh, let me see what my, let me see what it says for my, uh, one inch diameter. So let's go one by one. Uh, let's go one by one. Okay. So the one inch diameter, if I measure from here to here, uh, it's got a, let's try that again. If I go from here to here, it's got a one inch diameter, right? So uh, I want what I want to measure is I want to measure it horizontally from here to here. Okay, 0.25. Okay, and then I want to measure vertically. It's going to be the same, 0.25. And that's going to tell me what my step over and what my pass depth needs to be. So 0.25. Uh, that's all I needed to do to just kind of verify that. So let's go back here. Uh, 0 0.25 cut depth. Um, we're going to use the half inch round over or three eighths inch round over bit. Sorry. Um, let's, uh, set this up properly. This is a two flute bit, uh, 0.25 inches deep. 
33.3% step over. Uh, this is a one inch diameter, so I'm gonna go um, 18,000 RPMs. We're gonna go uh, 65 and 15. Okay, so I'm gonna be cutting on the outside of the line, but I'm gonna be stepping over negative 0 0.25 that distance, I need it to step over. So if I were to um, come back here real quick, when I imagine that my block, imagine that my block is getting that round over cut, right? Well, when there's zero step over allowance, it's cutting on the right side of the bit. So I'm cutting down a quarter of an inch, you know, from the top it's cutting down a quarter of an inch, which is there, but now I need to have it step over the line. When you're going over the line, it's always a negative cut. So I have it step over the line a quarter of an inch so that when it cuts, you know, we're here and it's creating that round over. So that negative 0 0.25, 0.25 cut depth, negative 0.25 step over on the outside of the line. That's gonna create that, okay? So let's undo this. Let me get back to here. Uh, and um, 0.25, negative 0.25, I'm gonna calculate that. All right, so preview the visible toolpath. That is going to, um, whoa, 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 Charlie, hold on a second. That is a no-no, Stephanie. We don't want that. Let me make sure my block is three by three. It is. All right, let me see what I did here. Profile cut on the outside of the line. Notice how it's on the inside here. Negative step over. Uh, the If I go with a zero step over, and calculate this. Let me go into solid view here. Um, it's only removing that. It's not. It's not rounding it over. I need that to step over a negative. Let me see if the bit I chose was actually one inch diameter. It is one inch diameter. Hold on a second, Stephanie. Bear with me. Somebody probably already knows the answer of what I did wrong here. Um, one inch diameter, three eighths inch radius. It's a quarter inch, quarter inch. That is a negative 0.25. Let me calculate that. Let me look here. What is happening there? That's way too much. So my bit profile Even though it says an inch, it's, I'm gonna back that off because it should not be that, that's stepping over way too far. And it, it's damn sure not a positive number. If I went positive, it would be away from the line, right? So it's gotta be a negative. I know that, I'm, I'm, I'm just not second guessing myself here. All right, let's go, let's go an eighth of an inch and let's see what's happening here. or three sixteenths. I don't know what's happening at this part, Stephanie, so bear with me just a second. Getting the inconsistent cut. Let me reset this preview and preview the visible toolpath. And let me see, preview all toolpaths here. Okay, is this a glitch? Is this a glitch in my matrix? <laughs> Hold on a minute. Now I'm not getting any cut. Uh, let's go negative. Calculate. Okay. All right. So it's not an eighth of an inch. And it's all right. I'm going to redraw the bit and re add it to my tool database because evidently the three eighths inch bit is wrong. <laughs> okay, so bear with me just a second. I want to um, 
uh, and I'll actually use, I'm going to use real measurements from a real tool. So bear with me a second here. Let's go online and let's go with a three eighths round over bit. All right, let's go um, with Mag Amana, Amana 49704. All right, 49704. All right, we're gonna go with exact measurements on this. We could, uh, you cannot use a chamfer toolpath to do a round over. Um, you can do, uh, you can do a chamfer toolpath if you want chamfered edges, uh, Stephanie. I'll show you that too as well. Um, and again, your round over could just be an eighth inch round over, right? So you're just softening the edges with rounded edges. It could be a quarter inch round over. You can go to Lowe's or Home Depot or wherever to get those types of round over bits and things. But um, uh, the white side 2050 on Amazon, uh, all these bits are available on Amazon and stuff. But I'm just trying to, if it was a die and we want a nice big round over, that's why I'm going with this. We could also do a quarter inch round over too. Uh, but yes, if you want to do a chamfer with a V bit, you could absolutely do that and I'll show you that one as well. But let me just uh, get the tool right here just for a second and um, a one inch diameter. And then the uh, D1 right here is gonna be a quarter inch wide. And then the um, radius is three eighths and the cutting height is five eighths. Okay, so that's uh, 15, 30 seconds is what my cutting height is. All right, so that's important for me. Okay. So overall, 5 eighths by 1 inch. Let me come back here, and this will help someone else out too, so bear with me just a second. Uh, we're going to draw a rectangle that is uh, 0.625. I'm sorry, uh, one inch by 0.625. It's gonna have a 3 8 inch radius. The um, if I draw a line from here straight up. 15 sixteenths. Why am I why am I so stupid here? Fifteen thirty seconds, Laney. 15, 30 seconds, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's try that again. Fifteen, thirty seconds. That's more like it. God, that was killing me. All right. And um, let's go here. I'm gonna go into node editing. I'm going to cut the vector here, cut it here, get rid of that for a minute. This bad boy right here, get out of node editing, but he's gonna get pulled up to there. And if I measure from here to here, that says 0.375, and in a manas tool, it's a quarter. So we got to bring 
a mana. So 0.375, a quarter of that, uh, three eighths a quarter, that's an eighth. So it's got to be brought in a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm going to go to node editing and I'm going to grab this. Um, I'm going to grab this node and I'm going to drag it straight this way, but I'm going to type in uh, 0 0.0625 and hit enter. Whoa. Whoa. 0 0.0625, enter. 0 0.0625, enter. All right, and then I'm going to cut this bit in half. And I'll just add a line there just for shits and giggles. Okay, so this is the Amana bit here. Now this bit has a, um, it has a cutting height. When I do my pass depth, the height is going to be 15, 30 seconds, which is 0.469, right? We'll just do that. And then it's going to have a step over, negative step over, of 0.375. Now, I'm going to take this bit and I'm going to add it to my tool database. Sorry that this got drug out, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, when things do, they do. Um, Okay, now in my profile, I'm going to be past depth of 0.469. I'm going to have a step over of negative 0 0.375 because that's what I measured there. I think I, everybody agree with me on that. And I'm going to switch to that tool. Calculate. Reset the preview. Preview the visible toolpath. That's what a round should look like, Stephanie. <laughs> All right, so let's show Stephanie how to do a chamfer as well, too. Uh, so that is the proper round over. Now, we would repeat, rinse and repeat this. Uh, let it finish that uh, corner there. Uh, preview um, the visible toolpath for the one. So we would have this round over right now. We're going to be doing this to all of the edges. That cut is going to be cut on all of the edges in the backside and everything. So it's going to, you know, go through and round over all of those. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And your die, when it's all said and done, all of the edges, even these vertical edges here and everything, they're going to have this round over. Now, if we were doing this as a chamfer, Steph, we would just select the line. We would go to the chamfer toolpath. Uh, arrows, when those arrows are pointing, wherever the arrow head is pointing to, that's the deepest part of the cut. The deepest part of the cut. So we want to be pointing to that line. Um, and uh, so in this case, we're going to be starting at zero and we're going to be using... Uh, whatever, you know, whatever angle you want to go at, right? Uh, with your V-bits and stuff. Um, I'll just go with a 90 degree, just as an example. And we'll click apply. And okay. Uh, we're going to be um, going in, sloping upward, meaning from our line, we're sloping upward to the shallowest part of the cut. The deepest part of the cut is at the line. And um, the uh, depth, how deep you want to go and how wide you go, you can you know change that. When you change your cut depth, let's say I only want to go uh, 3 eighths, just as an example, 0.375. My cut width and my depth change. 
So when I calculate this toolpath, reset the preview, preview the two visible toolpaths, we will have our center cut and then we will have our chamfer. Now, that chamfer, gonna take a second, right? Then you'd have a die that wouldn't roll very well because it has sharp edges, but then you could take a sandpaper and whatever and you could kind of sand it up and all that stuff and everything. So um, you can, uh, you know, uh, it, you can do the same thing. You, it's just this side, those four get done. This side, those four get done. And you get your, you carve your proper numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? You have your layers for each of your vectors and stuff that you're cutting. But um, the uh, round over could be an eighth inch round over, quarter inch round over, three eighths, whatever, whatever. Uh, yeah, it's not round, right? A chamfer is a straight chamfer cut. It's not round. Uh, so you want to use a round over bit really more so than a chamfer. A chamfer is an angle cut. That's the word chamfer, angle cut. Um, so it's an angle cut. And uh, the, um, but that's how you would do your die, right? And then I would do all of my ones, my all of my ones with my box core bit, my half inch box core bit, change to my, um, uh, uh, I'm kind of, I, I could, do all the ones and then uh, change bits and then do all my edges, right? Uh, and then flip, do my next numbers on all of my tops and then do my edges, flip, and I could do that or I could stay with one bit, do all my numbers, flip, number two, flip, number three, number four, number five, number six, while I have that same box score bit doing all the numbers. Then I switch bits and um, I come back and do all of my edges. Edges, roll, edges, roll, edges, and you flip and stick it back in the jig. Flip and stick it back in the jig. Uh, so uh, that kind of thing. And um, your jig, you could do however many you want, right? In this case, I'm doing uh, six rows, six columns, uh, which is uh, 36 pieces, right? At one, sh in, not in one shot, but yeah, in one run. You know what I mean? Cool. Um, and that vector, this vector right here for ones, for the twos, for the threes, for the fours, for the fives, for the six, they would actually be on their layers in this, this is my layout. Uh, and um, let's paste that. And then hold down the shift key. And that gets aligned to the center, right? So you put all you that one, you know, you copy that all your sixes, all your fives, all your fours. So you could create the same linear array that you did uh, with your jig. You could create your same linear array that you did with your jig here, and uh, you can copy, you know, all the ones, all the twos all the threes, all the fours, all the fives, all the six. And you do it on each layer. Make a new layer for each one. But you use your same layout, right? And you can knock out, you know, these party die. There's parties all over the neighborhood because of Stephanie's die, right? You know, that's what I mean. You know, making some money. All right. Hopefully that helped. Let's go back and see. Um, let's go back. Cole says he wants to roll some dice now. Um... The chamfer toolpath is going to create angles and um, and all that. And, uh, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is 937. We have really, we've been talking and we've only had just a few questions, which is great and everything. Uh, but um, it, we're, it's so late because it took me so long to make that die <laughs> and get that round over right. But uh, the round over was incorrect because my bit dimensions that are of the tool that I chose were incorrect. So um, the, uh, it just depends on you got it. When you draw that form tool and add it in, you got to draw it to scale and get it right. And I got it wrong. So that means that, you know, in my off time, I need to come over to my round over bit, my three eighths, and I need to redraw it and re-add, delete the old one, the bad one and everything. But um, 
So all the ones, all the twos, all the threes, fours, fives, and six. Now, while these are selected, you know, Jen, I would come over here and I would move them to a new layer, and this would be my ones, right? And that way I could turn that layer off. And um, uh, except for, let me turn that layer back on. This vector does not, uh, does not go on that with that. So I could turn my layer off and my twos, right? Just as an example, we'll, we'll end this with this uh, layer two, turn that on, turn that off, select the vectors. I don't really need the square. Let me just do this real quick. Okay, select the vector. And on this, we want we need the rectangle, right? So make sure that the um, make sure that the rectangle is in each of the layers. And don't do that. Don't do that. My uh, my green circle throws me off sometimes. Um, again, select that. Right click and copy. And then in my jig, I can right click and paste. I can group that together, G for group, and select this bottom box. Align to the center of that. Select this object and array it using the same settings as my other. And, uh, oh, don't do that. Let's try that again. got to select come on now stick with me copy so all my twos uh threes fours fives six okay cool all right rod thanks man thanks roger appreciate you uh and everything so if you were making yard dye uh stephanie and like you're like hey i'm production lining this get yourself a piece of mdf cut you out some pockets you know, only three eighths inch deep is all you need. And there'll be friction fit. So you stick them in, flip, flip, flip for every every side you're cutting. And then you just start throwing them in a, uh, a laundry basket, right? Just start throwing them in after they're done carving. Put more blanks in, throw those in. And then some unlucky bastard is going to be over there having to pull them out of the laundry basket and do all the sanding and the painting, right? They got to do all the sanding, you know, and, uh, you know, and then they got to paint the black circle. <laughs> That's not going to be you, right? You've done all the hard work with the design. So let's go from there. Okay. Um, Bob, you are very welcome. Uh, and um, uh, I, uh, I thank you very much. And, uh, you know, thank you for being a paid member. Uh, Doug and Sabrina, and, or Stephanie, not Sabrina. Uh, I don't know why. I got Sabrina on the mind because of the witch, Sabrina the witch. Uh I want to, which we're still supposed to be talking about Halloween project or holiday projects, right? Uh, I wanted to do some, I wanted to talk about uh, a video that I saw. So let me remind me of that later. But Stephanie and Rod and Roger and um, all of my paid members, I really, Doug and David Lowell, man. Thanks, bro. I appreciate you. And um, I appreciate all of you very much. And let's, uh, let me just do this really quickly. But um, Bob Hutchinson, David Lowell, Rod Walleen, Sabrina, Roger, Roger Brown, David Krause, Chad Jones, Doug Fuji, and Roger, Roger Bacock, Basic, basic, the cock. Let me know and uh, see if you can write it out in the pronunciation in the in the group and all and everything. But I want to thank you all for uh, you know supporting me and becoming uh, you know paid members. Now uh, because some of you popped in late and all that stuff, uh, what I said at the beginning of this training class is in the community tab on the website. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a post for just the paid members only, and it's going to be the instructions. Uh, with the link uh, on how to get to the Facebook group. Now, there's a group 
for paid members that cannot be, it can't be found in a search. It's hidden. It's exclusive. It can't be found. It's not, it's not open to the public. Uh, it can only be invited in by a link. So I'll, I'll send you out that link so you can all get in that group so we can start having some discussions on things and all and, and just, uh, you know, collaborating with one another. Looking forward to it very much. So, but uh, stay tuned and keep an eye on that community tab and all your other benefits uh, for you silver and gold members. Um, I'll start uh, communicating with you and uh, getting you the links and everything that you need for your discounts on the websites and all that stuff. All right. So the uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, that are wondering what the hell I'm talking about, uh, I just released a video today on the channel. You can go watch it, but uh, we've introduced uh, uh, paid memberships uh, for silver and gold plans where you get uh, access to an exclusive community and um, perks and, and things that uh, that won't be uh, available to the public. So if you're interested in that, go to the website or the, uh, the YouTube main channel, click on the join button and just listen to the video there or watch the new video that I just released. All right, cool. So um, Warren says, uh, thanks for the valuable information and it was luck that I found you uh, live. Do you do this every Tuesday night? Every other Tuesday night, and, and I do want to I do want to stress that, ladies and gentlemen, for all of my subscribers, okay, not just the paid members, all of my subscribers, uh, the every other Tuesday night is going to be remaining. It's every other Tuesday night at um, Warren. It's every other Tuesday night at seven fifteen p.m. from seven till whenever we end. We're gonna, we're about to end in about fifteen minutes. Uh, but uh, that's every other Tuesday night uh, and, uh, and everything. Now, paid members. Uh, there are going to be members only classes uh, every Wednesday evening at 7.30. Uh, Wednesday, every Wednesday evening. And these are just, it's going to be a, uh, a live events like this every Wednesday uh, at 7.30. Uh, and it's just for members only. Now, members, this does not, the, the, the live classes will not start uh, I'm, I'm getting everything set up and the, the channel because uh, the gold members can come on live with me and stuff backstage. They can come on live on camera and everything. I got to get all those instructions done. So the, our live events, our Wednesday night classes for the members is going to start uh, two weeks from today. So not this coming Wednesday, but next Wednesday, you're, there's going to be a live event on Wednesday evenings for members only. Okay. So again, in the community tab, I'll put out some member-only posts, uh, get you into the Facebook group, and then you'll have we'll get you that information and stuff so you know how to get all your perks and benefits and everything. All right, any other questions? And hey, Chad, what's happening, man? Did you pop in? Chad, weren't you in here earlier? Uh, I just gave you a shout-out. I mean, thanks for popping by. Um, did uh, And thanks for being a supporting member, Chad. Uh, did uh, y'all have any other questions? We got... We got about 14 more minutes. I can wrap up. We'll wrap up at, at 10 o'clock. Uh, and uh, if we don't have any more questions, I'll get away from the die for just a moment. And Stephanie, I hope that helped. I don't know if it did. It was probably a lot, right? But uh, I hope it helps and everything. Kool-Aid. Welcome, Kool-Aid. Thanks for upgrading. And Chad, thanks for upgrading, man. Cool. Uh, and Kool-Aid, thanks for becoming a paid member. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Um, the... Uh, Stephanie, I really hope that helped you with the die. And you don't have to do the jig thing. You could do one-offs and stuff like that. Just figure out a way that you can hold the part because you're cutting one side, you're flipping, and you're cutting one side, you're flipping, you're cutting one side. The jig just allows you to, one, hold the part, and two, uh, you can do multiples and, and kind of one run. So that's why I did that, right? So, um, but you don't have to do it as a jig, you know, and that kind of thing. Um, just figure out a way to hold and flip and hold and flip. So it's all, you don't have to keep, you don't want to have to keep setting your X, Y every time. If you, if you, if you're in a jig, then your X and Y doesn't change, right? Even your Z, uh, you know, and everything. So, uh, that's why I love jigs and stuff. We'll go talk more about that, uh, in another day. All right, let's, we got, we got, uh, about, um, we've got about uh, 12 minutes. Ask some questions if you guys and girls have it. And I uh, really appreciate uh, all of you for, for hanging in there and, and joining me and all. Uh, but let's go back to our job setup here. I'm going to bring this down to a... 
I'm going to bring this down to a 24 by 24. Let's go 18 by 18. And I'm going to go inch and a half thick. All right. And uh, let's see here. Give me just a moment. However you want um, your uh, ghoulishly goofy ghost to be and all that good stuff. We're going to draw a ghost here real quick. Um, let's, let's find, let me find a fun shaped one. Do, 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 do. It's Halloween. We might as well do something Halloween-y. None of these shapes are good, any good for what I want to do. Okay, let's grab this guy. Uh, right click, <laughs> save image as, um, and uh, this will be ghost, ghost, enter. All right, let's go over to import. Let's click OK here. All right, so. When, when it comes to the holidays, hey, John Thompson and Doug, thank you very much for becoming paid members. Um, when it comes when it comes to the holidays, right, and we're talking about bowls, you got like, you know, you can have bowls shaped like candy canes and stockings and pumpkins and uh, your chip and dip trays or bowls or what have you, right? Uh, you can have, um, you know, ghosts and and Santa Claus and reindeer, right? You can have all these fun shapes and fun shapes, platters and bowls and all. And you've seen them all over the place. You've seen them all over, you know, in YouTube, people showing how to make them on the table saw and this and that and whatever, you know, all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, if we were doing it in uh, the, like on a CNC uh, and, and everything, let's imagine, if you will, let me uh, come in here and zoom into this. Uh, we're going to go to the trace tool and I'm going to go to 75. 75 is my threshold there. Default corner fit noise filter. I'll turn up to four. Apply. Let's go here. Uh, preview. Apply. Okay. And then I'm going to delete the image. And that's going to be my vector, right? So this is going to be my vector for my bowl. Uh, it looks a little goofy for a bowl, but hey, we'll do what we can with it. Um, now, I'm going to size this up as much as possible. I am going to delete, ungroup it, and I'm going to delete the inner vector. The inner vector, delete. And um, I'm going to offset this vector inward three eighths of an inch. I like a three eighths inch wall. Now you can have your walls uh, to be whatever you want, but because I'm doing a round over on them and everything, you know, that eighth inch round over, eighth and eighth, it kind of gives me a little eighth in the middle, right? On that three eighths. That's why I like a, a three eighths inch wall. Um, so I'm going to offset that second line inward, that three eighths of an inch and everything. Now on this, uh, these uh, the eyes, right, and everything. Uh, these will these will be these will be uh, a uh, bowls or for for sauces or something like that or candies or something. Uh, but they're you know they're, because they're the eyes and the mouth of the ghost, right? They're going to be filled with something fun and festive. It could be something that's not edible. It could be stones or rocks or, you know, whatever, something, little pebbles, marbles, whatever, right? Uh, but our bowl is actually going to be in this area here. Um, I'm not really even going to uh, have it go around the eyes and stuff. It's, it's just going to be kind of this area here. I don't want it to be uh, too goofy looking around the mouth and everything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 
art tool. And I'm going to just try to find a transition somewhere uh, in here because when I pull this arc down, um, almost like it's the uh, collar of his shirt or something is down. <laughs> I don't know his hood. But uh, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to take the scissors and uh, trim this away. Because I'm going to carve these pockets here on this wood. This is going to be solid wood here. And this is going to be the dish where I can throw some chips or uh, whatever the case may be. David, I thank you very much, David. I appreciate you for popping in. Um, and, uh, and, and Stephen, um, Maine, give me a second. I'll read that in just a second. But let me uh, just say that this is a very simple cut. So all three of these cuts are going to be the same. I do want them to be rounded and everything. Uh, but, you know, if I wanted just a subtle dish, let's say that on these vectors here, that I didn't want to do a flat wall with a radius at the bottom. I just want a subtle dish here, right? Um, what I can do with each of these is I could use, I could do it as a model cut, and I could use that dome or dish, uh, you know, uh, vector, and I could use clipping in VCAR Pro, Desktop, or Aspire, right? And um, on these, I think I could do it. It wouldn't look too bad if I did it as one. Let me just see before I uh, make myself. Um, let's go to clip art. And I'm going to go with a shallow dish, 45 degrees. And I'm going to drop that up here on its face. Now, i got five minutes to try to finish this if I can. But let me see what I can do. And I think what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm actually going to be kind of uh, figuring it out as we go. Let's go here. All right, now this is going to, I'm going to go into my modeling properties and I'm going to turn this uh, dome into a dish. And my depth, I don't want to go that deep, right? I want to go, I'm just going to go uh, just a shallow depth, right? This is just representing the face of the, the ghost and everything. So I'm going to go, uh, let's go a half inch, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Uh, Steven, give me just a second. I'll end, I'll, I'll read that co uh, quote here in just a second. Uh, click, let me go into the 3D view, see what I'm dealing with there. Good, okay. All right, now. In my 3D view, let me get things, everything is kind of funky. Let me close this and let me throw a zero plane. Let me delete this one. Delete and let me put in a new one. Okay. So the, if, you, if you don't know what happened, the old zero plane was still in there and it was a smaller board, right? Um, so... Now, in here, in here, I am going to, on this level, I'm going to, let me split the view, and let's see how, let me see how I do, if I'm going to do this the way I think I'm going to do this, but I'm going to select these three vectors. Now, these vectors are going to be my clipping vectors, and in this level, when I come in here and I turn on clipping, apply clipping, uh, anything outside of the um, anything outside of the uh, anything outside of the um, the clipping vectors thank you very much the vectors is going to get removed so all I'm left with are kind of these uh, dishes now you see how they're shaped and everything and and all um, that's going to give me some, uh, you know, weird of these and everything. And if I did a dome for each one and I did one at a time, I might get a better, you know, transition where it comes up and everything for the mouth and the eyes. But I'm actually going to leave it like that. And I'm actually going to create a new level that's not clipped. So I'm going to create a new level here. 
And I'm going to take my zero plane and I'm gonna move it out of that clip tool so my zero plane uh, comes back and I'm left with this face here, right? Ooh, looks spooky. Okay, now on my, uh, my parts here and everything, uh, my depth is a half inch and I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. So it's a, I'm going with an inch and a half board. So I'll just leave that be. So now I've got that. Uh, let's do a profile cutout uh, just so we can kind of get the shape uh, going on here. Uh, we're going to go all the way through the material. So Z equals will give me my uh, thickness here if I use the right keyboard, Z equals. Um, cutting on the outside of the line, I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. And I've got one minute to try to do the pocket. Let's so finish that up. All right, let's preview that visible tool path. Okay. <clears throat> it's only two more tool paths. All right, now while that's uh, while that's running through and everything, FYI, I had a problem with my Planet CNC controller when I upgraded the software at, at the weekend. Turned out to be the digital certificate needed to be updated. Support from Planet CNC was amazing. Awesome. Okay, great, Stephen. Uh, and Kool-Aid says, just got a new planer. Haven't used it yet, but I got a lot of cutoffs from the 4x4s and the fences and the pieces and the, you know, the twisted and all that. So uh, get them squared up. It, yeah. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think he's asking me a question here, Kool-Aid. Um, he says, 4x4 uh, four four from the fences we put up and some of the pieces are twisted. Would I run them through it to get them squared up or a better way? Oh, if you've got cutoffs from a four by four block, I don't know what type of cutoffs you have or how big they are and everything. You need to understand something about a planer. Now you have a planer, but you don't have a joiner. Now a planer has rollers that push the material down and the planer's job is to create a parallel plane and a mirror face image of what's on the bottom side, right? But if there's a twist, a bow, a crown, a, a curve, a, an arc, uh, it's gonna flatten that board out, it's gonna create that parallel plane, but when it gets out of the planer, it's gonna bounce right back and that twist is gonna come back in. That's why you, the, the in the milling process, you have your joiner first, so that joints the edges and that gets you two uh, 90 degree edges from one another. And then you take those 90 degree edges and you bring them over to the planer and the planer creates that other parallel face to the one squared up face that you did on the planer. And then you take it over to the table saw and uh, the table saw squares up to the other face, right? So that's the milling process. Pla uh, you know, joiner, planer, table saw, done kind of deal. Um, you could utilize your CNC. So um, you could take a surface planer, you know, uh, shim, whatever the twist is and everything, shim, I use, I use playing cards like Dex cards, but use shims or whatever so it doesn't rock. And then have your CNC mill the surface, the front surface flat. Now you've created kind of a flat reference surface that you can flip over, and then you can mill that to create the parallel plane, and then you can do the other sides as well too. So shim so it doesn't rock, and then you know you can kind of go that way. Or now that you have two faces, you can take them over and um, uh, you don't have a joiner. So yeah, do this. You, you would repeat the you know the process for the other two faces. So that would be it. that would be it, Kool Aid. All right, now let me do a 3D. I'm gonna select these vectors here, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm going to do it's a 3D finish, a 3D rough first. Selected vectors the boundary with a quarter inch end mill. I'm going to rough cut that, uh, preview that visible tool path, and then a 3D finish with a ball nose bit because it, is, it does have that contoured curve in there. There's still a curve in there. You can see the different levels, right? And then we're going to have a 3D finish cut, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and the only 3D cuts are going to be just on the face of this. But uh, I'm going to use a... A quarter inch ball nose would have been fine for this, but I'm gonna go down to my eighth inch tapered ball nose. Selected vector is the boundary. We're gonna carve that. 
uh, preview that visible toolpath, and that's going to kind of create that uh, face, and we'll have those, you know, in there. Ooh. All right, and this is it. I ran over by three minutes, but let's uh, we'll finish up the bowl and everything. So that will be my face and all that cool stuff. Uh, again, it's you know just there for being the face, and then here I'm going to offset this just like we did before. But this time, I'm using my 7 16 inch radius bit. Uh, my 7 16 inch radius bit. So I'm going to take uh, 0.4375, and I'm going to divide that by 2 and hit equals. And that's going to be my offset inward. Okay. This vector that's selected is going to be my pocket cut vector. Uh, I'm going to go down a uh, half inch deep, quarter inch end mill, and I would probably, you know, use a half inch and a quarter because it's a big bowl, 18 by 18. I got, I got a half inch end mill for big areas and stuff. Um, powered planers are used to make one uh, surface parallel to the opposite surface. If you have a twister cut, there is no way of using jig, etc. cetera, uh, to do it, um, but it's a lot of extra work. Yeah, there is a way of using a planer sled, right? A jig where you have a fixed flat bed that has all kinds of cool little, you can use shims or all that so that the material doesn't rock as it goes through the planer and you're just creating, all you're doing at that point, you're creating that, that flat face, right? Uh, that you would use, that you would do on a joiner. You're creating that flat face. Once you've created that flat face, then you can flip it over and run it through the planer and all that. But I don't know, these are four by fours. I don't know how big of a piece is and all that stuff. And there's not a whole lot of surface to work with. But yes, uh, Talison, you're absolutely right. You can use a planar sled. Yep. Yeah, hand planes too. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So now, on this uh, chip and dip bowl, it's a goofy looking bowl, but... Um, let it, uh, we're almost done. And then we'll do the little profile tool path. So this is the last pass right here. All right. And then we're going to do a profile tool path. And I'm also going to do a round over. So I should do the round over first uh, before I did the cutout. Uh, but uh, let's do a profile tool path. I'm going to go a quarter inch deep, 0.25. I'm going to use my 2050 roundover, which is an eighth inch roundover. I'm going to step over negative 0 0.125. Calculate. Also on the outside edge too, so select that vector as well. And it's not going to be that vector. It's going to be this one. Turn that off. And uh, let me open him back up here. Select, select, turn that off. Well, you son of a gun. One more time. Select, select, turn that off and calculate. All right, preview the visible tool path. This is just going to give me a nice little round over. What is happening? What did I do? What did I do? Oh. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's right. That's correct. I was about to freak out. Remember, I haven't run the uh, the bowl bit yet. All right, so rounding over those edges. I was about to freak out. I was like, man, I can't screw up this late in the evening. But uh, I got to do my bowl bit. Okay, and then we're gonna do a profile tool path, uh, cutting all the way through the material. No, I'm sorry. Uh, 0 0.5 inches deep is how car I'm deep I'm cutting. Uh, we're going to go with the bowl and tray bit. On the inside of the line, calculate that. Preview that visible tool. Whoa. Stop. Drop and roll. Stop. Make sure you got the right vector selected. Calculate. All right, 
reset that preview, preview this, 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 that, and that. Preview all tool paths. And as that's previewing, uh, we will close out the evening with that. Hold on a second. Not with that. Stop. That. 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 And that. Preview the visible tool pass. All right, let me see what we got here. Um, best thing is to use a joiner, right? To create the two flat surfaces 90 to each other and then use a planer on the other two surfaces, correct? Or joiner, planer, and then the table saw to create that, you know, that additional straight edge and everything. So absolutely. And, um, but Kool-Aid, uh, so there, you have a lot of uh, options and everything. If you didn't have, uh, and, and like uh, Taliesin said, uh, the, um, a planer slid. Basically, it's a flat fence kind of bed, like a flat bed that goes through the planer uh, that your material sits on, and you shim between that bed and the material so it doesn't rock or tilt or twist or whatever. You know, so it just stays, you know, flat. And when that planes, it's going to, you know, it's going to, you're going to run it through that planer until you create a flat reference surface. Then you can flip that over and run the other face through it and stuff like that. It's a lot of work, but it, it's doable and everything. And um, so uh, definitely bear with me just a moment. It um, It is doable. And Stephen, the the, the, the the digital certificate, that's good to know. Very, very good to know. Very, very good to know. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank uh, all of you for watching tonight. We ran a little over. I wanted to stop at 10, but um, this will be done in just a few seconds, and we'll be able to kind of close out with that. But thank you all for hanging out and uh, tonight and asking the questions that you asked. Hopefully, I answered them uh, well and gave you some uh, information that you needed and to all of my paid members thank you very much uh, and again uh, David Lowell John Thompson Doug the doll Chad Jones David Heineck Heineck I'm gonna say Heineck David let me know if I'm wrong Kool-Aid uh, Rod Wallen Stephanie and uh, Roger S Roger Brown Dave Krause Doug Fushi and Roger Bacock let me know if I pronounced that correctly and uh, I want to thank you all for being paid members and supporting the channel. Uh, it's awesome. And keep an eye out on the channel, on the community tab. There's going to be some posts that's just for paid members. And it's going to be your instructions and your link. It's a private link on how to get into the Facebook group, the exclusive Facebook group. You can't find it through searches on Facebook or anything like that. It's, it's absolutely closed off to everything. It's, it's, it's by invite only. So um, uh, that's where we, you'll be able to chat with me and everybody else. We'll be able to collaborate on things, uh, help with projects. Uh, you, know, you know, if you've got projects, you know, help with. And then start throwing in some projects that you want, you know, to show in the live classes. And two weeks from today, paid members, uh, every Wednesday night at 730, there's going to be a class uh, for just the paid members. It's not going to be open to the public. And uh, you can submit projects to be discussed during that class. We'll talk about all that in the Facebook group or uh, in the post that I put out. I'll give you the instructions, but stay tuned for those. Uh, tonight was the first night, and I want to thank uh, all of you that joined. Um, and uh, uh, I'll get all the instructions out to you for how to, how to access all your perks and everything. All right, so there is our ghostly ghoul, right? And our final, final, final cut uh, for the evening is the profile cut, uh, cutting on the outside of the line all the way through the material Z equals uh, with a quarter inch end mill. Calculate. Preview. And there is a silly billy little old ghost uh, bowl. Uh, that could be, it's a big bowl, right? It's 18 by 18, but it could be used for 
Halloween candy, right, to put out on the porch for the kids or, or, or at parties or something like that. And, um, you know, something silly. Now, me, what I would do is um, I would probably... Uh, I don't know. I would probably cut out the eyes and the mouth, put a, some kind of pocket on the back side of that before I cut it all out and did some LED lights or something silly, you know, where it glowed or what have you. You never know. But uh, yeah, no. So uh, in the again, again, the community tab, stay tuned for those uh, uh, paid member posts and I'll, uh, I'll get that information out to you guys and girls. I'll be writing it up and getting it all up to you tonight. But thank you all again. And um, uh, uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. And we're going to say good night here. Uh, I don't see any other questions that I missed. Uh, the issue was it came up with a license missing. On That's right. Yes. Uh, on the uh, earlier versions, uh, the license, the Windows uh, certificate that canceled and everything, and new certificates needed to be added uh, and stuff. So I'm glad you were able to figure that out uh, and everything for sure. Uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. I'm glad you were able to figure that out. All right, everybody. Until next time. Yeah, Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. Only three hours late. I have to watch it tomorrow. They, hey, Harvey, better late than never, man. Thanks for popping in. I appreciate you. Uh, but, uh, and, and, and way to end it, Harvey. Everybody, you know, telling everybody, don't forget to like. Like and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. And be sure to check out the new video that I released on the channel that kind of explains what the paid memberships are. Uh, and when you click on the join button, there's also another little two minute video that kind of gives you some insight as well, too. All right, everybody. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Hopefully you enjoyed tonight's class and got something out of it. And until next time, I'll see you soon.